prayers. Almighty God, who in your infinite wisdom and providential goodness have appointed the offices of leaders and parliaments for the welfare of society and the just government of humanity, we beseech you to look upon with your abundant favor these your servants whom you have been pleased to call to the performance of such important trust in this land. Let your blessing descend upon them here assembled and grant that they may, as in your presence, treat and consider all matters that shall come under their deliberation in so just and faithful a manner as to promote your honor and glory and to advance the good of those whose interests you have committed to their charge. Amen. Amen. Item number Thank two, you. communication from the chair. Thank you, colleagues. I welcome you. Uh, uh, are you now settled? Okay. okay. I welcome you to today's sitting. Um, remember yesterday, honorable colleagues, I told you that I have a list of colleagues who were ranked not to be participating in parliamentary activities and uh, the unfortunate bit is most of them were saying they don't catch our eye, we don't give them space, we struggle but yet I know most of them don't attend. Today I've seen like two they've come, they are in, so if they stand up I'll give them affirmative action. Uh, now, uh, instead of reading out the names, because some called me pleading, I'm going to write to them individually. Okay? Come and, uh, and represent their people. Because you see, don't depict the presiding officers. Among all people, why wouldn't we pick you? Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, and uh, some, by the way, attend, but they just uh, follow proceedings uh, properly. So uh, those ones at least are better <laughs> than, than, than those who don't come. So uh, I encourage all of you to participate in the proceedings of this house uh, so that you represent your people. Your people, let me tell you, honorable colleagues, if you think being in a constituency working alone will bring you back here, I can tell you, you are mistaken. The way, the day your opponent goes to the constituents and says, this one whom you voted to go and present our issues has never spoken and has evidence. I'm telling you, you will start on a very, very wrong footing. I try to speak, at least to greet the speaker. Oh, oh. <laughs> Uh, on, on the floor. Uh, 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 <laughs> because at least the people don't know about content. They, they know the times you've spoken. Okay? Okay? Uh, and I would want to give you opportunities really to come up and express uh, yourselves. Uh, so seniors, when you see standing up and sometimes I jump you and I'm uh, picking those who have not been seen many times. You know, it's the affirmative action we want to make. Uh, yesterday, I agreed with the Minister for Kampala that she will um, update the House after meeting, after meeting with colleagues uh, who had raised the issue of fecal sludge. So I hope the Minister for Kampala is around because I'll be calling her. I am mean Chief Whip. I hope she's around. I'll be calling her to, uh, to, to, to update the House. Then, uh, when we were concluding yesterday, I reminded you, honorable colleagues, we are all part of this house and would want to help facilitate government business in a timely manner. And therefore, we request honorable colleagues on the front bench, and, and uh, some of you, by the way, are doing it very well. We request you to work with us, to cooperate with us, and we process government business. Now, on matters, action taken, resolutions of parliament. 
especially when they are to do with accountability. And the minister wants to bring a one-liner and say, I reported back. Honor Minister of Finance, I want to put you on notice that it will be difficult for me and either my colleague to process the budget for that ministry. That's the weapon we have. It's our last card. We've decided to start invoking it. If Parliament finds issues of accountability and it recommends action to be taken and the executive side doesn't take action, Parliament will not appropriate more money to an entity with questionable officers. So the board is in your court, but that's how we want to do it. And we, our prayer, and our biggest prayer, is that we don't reach that level. That's our biggest prayer. And I'm very sure we will not we will cooperate, work together, and ensure we don't reach that level. Uh, I hope my message has been taken in good faith. It's, uh, because even me, colleagues here making resolutions in vain, does not in any way help. And as far as fulfilling our mandate of oversight, is concerned. Um, right Honorable Prime Minister, I have uh, this afternoon received um, a complaint, a petition, in fact, from uh, from um, uh, from West Nile Cooperative Union Limited on the issue of payment for their tobacco, money for tobacco. We've discussed this issue over time. We have agreed, but they are not receiving money. So, Honorable oh Minister, this is not a petition I will refer to the committee for now, no. I'm referring it to you, Honorable oh Minister for Trade, for consideration. And you update the House in 30 days. Then, when you don't take any action, that's when I will invoke the committee uh, to look into it. I want to first give you a chance. So, I'll, pa I'll pass it on after here uh, to ensure that indeed you work on it. Um, yes, uh, colleagues, I've also received uh, a petition from our creative industry uh, members. Uh, led by their uh, chairman, uh, Eddie Musuza, commonly known as uh, Eddie Kenzo. Uh, today they've met me uh, this afternoon, but the petition I have assigned Honorable Nyamutoro to present it uh, so that I can guide on how it is going to be handled thereafter by the House. So uh, I will later on amend the order paper to allow Honorable Nyamutoro to present the petition on behalf of our uh, uh, friends in the music industry. They are in the gallery, but we shall read their names after I've received the list so that we can recognize uh, their presence. So for now, allow me to just pick five issues of national importance. Uh, I have very many issues I've uh, seen here being presented, but I'll focus on emergencies. I'll focus on emergencies. Like I guided, every Thursday, I'll be giving two and a half hours for members to raise issues, to do with your constituents, to do what. And I've already informed the Prime Minister, she'll be here with the ministers. Uh, we shall give you enough time, colleagues, you raise your issues, and they are, we ensure that they are responded to. Uh, so uh, I'll start with Honorable Christine Kaya. I have not communicated things that need... Uh, yeah, my, my, no, my issues were very clear. The petition, I've given it to the minister. The other petition, only Wanyamutoro is going to present it. Now, what do you want to react on? These are... Uh, no. Please. Colleagues, I urged you not to put fuel. Le, 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 let's keep using water. Those ones who are not, those who are not here yesterday, they don't know. Uh, so, please, only Christine. Thank you, right, Honorable Speaker. Uh, 
Dear Speaker and the House, I would like to remind you that tomorrow is the World Teachers Day. I'm a, teacher, I'm a daughter to teachers. And um, based on the cries and challenges of the teaching profession in Uganda, I hereby report that it is uh, urgently needed. It is of uh, urgent uh, importance that the minister at least shares with us a statement. First of all, to recognize this um, profession as an important profession and um, to also show us the plan as a minister, I mean as a ministry, concerning the, 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 the teaching profession because for a very long period of time they have been sharing with us some of their challenges. So we would use this chance, probably today or tomorrow, to get a statement from the minister as far as the challenges made by this profession are concerned, but also to, co to commemorate their day and to entice them and to also inform them that really parliament thinks about this profession. Thank you, Honorable. I thank you, Right Honorable thank Speaker. Honorable Minister. Thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker. I want to thank my sister, Honorable Christine, for raising this very critical matter indeed. Teaching profession is a noble profession. We love our teachers. Many of us here are teachers. And it is also true, Mr. Speaker, that tomorrow, the 5th of October, every year has been designated as International Teachers' Day that is being celebrated worldwide. And Uganda is also taking that day very seriously. Tomorrow we are having the national celebration. Honorable, don't make a statement in that form. Okay. We, we always receive statements, okay? So Thank you, you oh no, Mr. Speaker. Just first listen to me. Yeah. Uh, I would guide that if you have a statement, come, I give you space. Even today I can amend the order paper and I accommodate you. Mr. Speaker, the, speak, the, the, the statement is being worked on and I want to pledge that tomorrow I will bring the statement right here and present on the Thank floor. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, because that's what a member wanted. Colleagues, a member wanted a statement, then we would debate the statement. Yeah, but I would urge ministers, if you have any international day that is going to be celebrated, we give such a statement's priority on the order paper. So they are part of government business. So always come in time. Okay? Honorable Biraro, uh, procedure up. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Talking about uh, special days that are internationally recognized, on Sunday, the 1st of uh, October, was International Older Persons Day. And uh, I was expecting the Minister of Gender to seek space from the older paper to debrief this house on the status of older persons. When we are processing the uh, MPS for uh, the Minister of Gender in this financial year, there are very curious issues uh, in this entity and uh, the minister seemed clueless on how to progress. And when we offered the alternative, we thought we had uh, enabled a very disabled entity to really pick up. And including failure to find resources uh, to finance um, uh, SAGE. Dr. Speaker, would you now that is sleeping on the job to order the Minister of Gender to come and debrief the house on the status of older persons and how they have handled the issues that were raised at the consideration of the MPS for this financial share that they seem to be cruelest about right on the speaker now that the minister and the entire entity seem to be sleeping on duty with your intelligence right on the speaker thank you uh rob yes i also observed that and i was concerned now i think as a practice how we are going to move forward Okay. If the government in power is not able to 
to give a statement, then I'll be allowing the opposition under Rule 53, where the leader of opposition is entitled to, to making statement, to give statement. Because, I mean, you, you make my... Just... Uh, government chief whip. Uh, even me, my hands get tied. Okay? You have an international day. You spend government resources on it. This is parliament that appropriates. And you don't bring here a statement so that members would bet and come on board. I don't know going forward what we do. What, what do you think we do, government chief whip? Right Honourable Speaker, the standard practice normally is the Minister comes to Cabinet with um, a statement, an information paper, then later on the Minister proceeds on the floor. Just like you are aware, on 9th of October we are celebrating our independence and the Minister in charge of the Presidency has written to you requesting for space tomorrow on the order paper to brief the country through parliament. That is normally the standard practice and we will inform ministers or MDAs to normally respect that practice that after cabinet they should come to parliament. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. Yes, uh, I had allowed Honorable Viraro. Yeah, thank so you, right on uh, Just speaker. before Honorable Biraro, so even then, for days that are already covered, for example, the day for older persons, please let the minister prepare a statement. Then next week I give space and we discuss their issues. Okay? Right Honorable Prime Minister, are you with me? That for Minister for Elderly to bring a statement, Minister for Gender to bring a statement. And uh, next week, I'll also appoint a date for, I think next week, that's when we should have debate on the one for Youth Day, which we deferred. Okay? Right, Honorable Speaker, the Minister for Elder Persons will bring a statement here since we had our day when we were in recess. He's going to present a statement here on the floor of Parliament. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Honorable Guzuri. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, you guided that the Minister for Lands and Urban Development should comply with the statutory requirement for them to bring a report to this House to highlight how all local governments are complying with the Physical Planning Act. To date, that report has not been submitted anywhere. I therefore seek your indulgence to invoke your powers so that uh, the Prime Minister can last with the responsible minister so that we know to what extent these local governments are complying. Otherwise, we are destined to develop slums in this country and uh, I don't know who is going to pay the price. Thank, Thank you. you. Honorable Minister, you are here. An update for the House? And colleagues, on Tuesday, uh, we are having a statement from the Minister of Energy on the status of the electricity sector. So issues to do with electricity, she, have, she promised me on Tuesday. I'll be here. Thank you. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I want to thank Honorable Guzuli for the concern. It's Oguzu Lee, Ogu Oguzuli. not Oguzuli. Ogu Oguzuli. <laughs> right Honorable... Right Honourable Speaker, I want to pledge to this House that next, next week we shall submit the report as required. Good. So, thank you. Now, colleagues, uh, let me go back on track. Uh, on a procedure? Thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. Right Honourable Speaker, yesterday I raised the issue of the challenge of um, sewage in Rubaga Division. You sent us to the field and the Minister of Education 
was there together with the team, the chair of the education committee, and you had asked them to come and report. So, right on, um, uh, speaker, I'm just wondering whether it would not be procedure right to allow them to report to the house and we find a way forward. But also, the minister of lands, right on, our speaker. Just, uh, honorable Sarah, you can take your seat. Uh, just let it not, eh? let it pass. Honorable Sarah came just a minute after I had addressed that matter. So, yeah, you sent us to the field. My, apology. my apology. Yeah. Uh, thank you, right that's, Honorable Speaker. That, that's the point I started with, Honorable. Oh, they are going to report. Thank you, right Honorable Speaker and Honorable colleagues. Last year, 2022, Ag September and October, there are a lot of rains that ravaged the country and most of the roads were destroyed and reports were here, brought here in the, in the floor of parliament. Boheju West and the whole Boheju inclusive who reported to this house as a matter of national importance. Today, after September and in October, no action has been taken at all in Boheju. Roads like Echirembe, Echiha, Nyamihira, and so many, many, many others, right on the speaker, were broken off and communities have never connected ever since. Right on the speaker, we are again into the same season after year. My prayer is right on the speaker. That this house now compares government to go to Buheju and fix some roads so that communities can be reconnected to that the Ministry of Works provides carvats and BRCs to replace those that were destroyed by the rains during that season. Right on the speaker, I beg to pray. Thank you, Honourable Minister. Thank you very much, Right Honourable Speaker. I thank my Honourable colleague for reminding us on the matter. And uh, I'm going to get in touch with him to get further clarification and the information. Then we saw we can sit with him to sort that problem and we we'll get out of it. Thank you. Uh, but, 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 but Honorable, Honorable Minister, Honorable Minister, you have a station in Mbarara. You have your own station. So the member has just given information. What I expected was you to say you're going to direct the manager of your station in Mbarara to go and assess. And then... Yeah? Oh, you think that would be better? Oh, you're working on it. Honorable <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh Minister. Uh, 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 right, Honorable Speaker, why I insisted I need to contact the Honorable Colleague to verify the claims. This, that problem was nationwide. And the majority of the problems of that category we have worked on them. And I'm, I'm also, I was also wondering why we have not tackled their part. That's why I said I will get in touch with him. We, fire, we further verify, then we see where the problem was. If we see they were missed out, maybe because of any problem, we have the capacity, we have the regional mechanical workshop, we have an force account, even of recent, the one billion, half of it has already gone. We saw to sit and harmonize that that problem is solved. Thank you very much. Chairman, Chairman Committee on Roads. Uh, before chairman committed, before. Yes. you had the procedure matter on ever? Mr. Speaker, thank you very much. Mr. Speaker, as a matter of procedure, following what the uh, Honorable Mukama is saying, he's saying he wants to get in touch with Honorable Viraro. But the problem is the same. In Mbale, we had the same story for a year now. The Prime Minister have had meetings with her. She promised there were two, 220 billion shillings for roads. Nothing has happened. So for the minister to say you get in touch with the only one person for one region, when other regions are suffering the same, it will not be good. We have submitted all these roads and bridges personally to the Minister of Works. Nothing has happened. I've written to everyone. Nothing has happened. So would it be a procedural matter to say he would be, would it be a procedural right to say we only move with one person? other than the entire nation. I beg to move right. 
Oh, 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 colleague. Uh, anyway, before I make my comment, let me first allow <laughs> chairman of the committee. <laughs> Thank you very much, Rotorno Speaker, for this opportunity. And uh, I was looking at my brother, Honorable Minister. He, I happen to chair that committee. Every time we interact with the ministers, and they take and quote him, they are very clear that they don't have money. In uh, the Mbarara Mechanical Workshop, right on the speaker, there are three excavators. They are all down. They said it is only one that can be able to move, but also it would need 16 million, which the workshop does not have. Now, that applies to the other mechanical workshops in the country, right on the speaker. Right on the speaker, those mechanical workshops, we are actually taking an effort to, to, to assess them. They are white elephants. Now, I am wondering why my senior here, I don't know whether it is a spirit of cadership, why he cannot tell the, this parliament the truth. No, that's not a spirit of cadership. No. Kada has told the truth. <laughs> because, really, right on the speaker, and I, I want to be on record on this, that as we head for, for, for these heavy rains, it is going to be worse, and to everyone. So, we should not cosmetic right on the speaker about this. The Honorable Minister should not give blanket statements. This is something that we should interrogate. If we, they need support, they should state it to the country and we support them. Thank you. Honorable Minister, on Wednesday next week, I need you to give a statement showing your capacity and preparedness to handle emergencies that are coming. Because I'm having very many issues. Honorable Nyach Kongoro has a bridge. Oh, who has huh? very many. So now we need to know how prepared are you. So that if you are not and you don't have resources, we stop wasting time about it. Okay? Otherwise, the message you're giving us here shows you have money. But what the chairman of the committee is finding from his assessment with the committee seems you're not doing well. Uh, Rope, you wanted to say something? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, of course, I, I submit a lot of empathy to my honorable brother. I submitted to the House a catalog of uh, issues for which members raised concern and they got no responses. Um, and this issue was issue number 19. It was raised on the 25th of April 2023 by the Honorable Francis Mujuche. It's being brought back by the Honorable um, Bilal. There are over 50 issues here. And they're going to continue re being recycled here because the front bench prefers that they fizzle out. I don't know, Speaker. But on the speaker, would it be procedure okay with your kind indulgence that um, in your time after this house, you kindly get hold of this document and call minister by minister as a roll call of, uh, of uh, perpetual absentees to come here and answer to their duty? Because a secret document of the house called the order paper is being congested because there are people sleeping on duty and we are circling business, right on the speaker. May I kindly ask of you that uh, you indulge your, the other paper to call them because in, uh, in the matters you are calling on, um, on their responses may not answer to these questions. There are several issues on the environment, on corruption, on infrastructure, on what, and uh, they're not answering them. Thank and you. they believe they will fuse out, right on speaker. May you kindly guide on how we should deal with these issues now that this is a document, a property of the House, right on speaker. Uh, th thank you. Uh, thank you, Lop, uh, for, for, for that information. Already, Clark is instructed to comb through the Hansard, pick all these issues. And I was told that uh, 
I think they should be ready by, by tomorrow. Okay? Then I wanted, after we've gotten all these issues, we have a meeting with the lead of government business, the government chief whip, the lead of opposition, and the crack, and we ensure that we create enough space on the order paper for ministers to respond to all these issues without going into too much. Oh, even the prime minister can take them on, you know, under prime minister's time, and we have them sorted. But what members need are answers. Of course, it's really absurd for a member to ask a question and he gets an answer after six months. It's, uh, that's not only a failure on the part of the executive, but also on our part as the leadership of the House. Okay? If a minister doesn't respond, then we shall come here and we say, so and so has deliberately refused. But they shouldn't fail because they've always responded. They've always responded to these issues. So, uh, Clark, ensure that indeed all these issues are finished so that maybe Friday I can have a meeting uh, with you, with the leadership on both sides, and we see how ministers can quickly. Maybe some have forgotten about these issues. Yeah, okay. We do all this together, honorable colleagues. We handle it together. So, um, no, honorable colleagues, we are going to go on procedure and we reach 4 p.m. You know, uh, l let's just conclude. Let's all other issues, I'm pushing them to tomorrow. Okay? Or, no, ah, there is one issue, Honorable Nachimuri. Yes, yesterday, because I pushed you to today, and uh, Honorable Christine, I've remembered. Huh? No, the rest I will do tomorrow. I'll do one, one. The rest tomorrow, I'll give you enough time, Honorable colleagues. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, yeah. for this opportunity. I rise on a matter of national importance regarding a uh, disaster that happened in my area, Kalangala. On the 2nd of October, that was Monday, we had a heavy downpour and a number of 78 people lost their, lo their property, including houses and different belongings and also crops, animals. And this was in uh, Moena Landing site in Kalangala Town Castle. Mr. Speaker, we have a, a total number of 34 females, 25 males, 11 children, and 8 elderly people. And uh, my prayers, Mr. Speaker, one, for the Prime Minister's office to go to ground and assess the level at which this affected our people. And secondly, for the very first time in the history of Uganda, for Kalangala to get relief items, because we have never gotten any from this government. Cons yes, relief items. I represent Kalangala. I know what I'm saying. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker, for your opportunity. Mm. Thank you. But that's a loaded statement. Say Kalangala has never, you know, you have any. One of Prime Minister. Is it true Karanga has never received any ready for help? Right, Honorable Speaker, um, we have to check our records uh, to ascertain whether Karanga has never got any relief item. But uh, sorry for what happened, and uh, we are going to send our team on the ground to assess. Uh, how uh, far that uh, what what really happened on the ground, and then after the team has come back, we also handle the issues that need urgent attention. I thank you. Thank you. Now, honourable colleagues, I've received four cheats here. Uh, you're even bored. You tell me I give you an opportunity because tomorrow you're not going to be here. Can you, uh, can you imagine? <laughs> this democracy has taken us far. <laughs> no, this, you're giving me notes. You're, not, you're even saying, allow me, me I want to speak day. today because tomorrow I'm not here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I really understand <laughs> the issues you might be having. But as long as Parliament has not assigned you anywhere, 
I expect you to be here when I'm here. Otherwise, whom am I going to address? <laughs> will, I, will I run business alone? <laughs> yes, so, uh, Honorable Christie, uh, Martin Muzari procedure. Honorable procedure, then. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, before we went for recess, the issue has raised here to do with the feedback, especially on resolutions passed by this parliament, especially on reports of accountability. I had expected that uh, the Prime Minister would have used this uh, recess to organize for us that report so that we can know how far and what actions have been taken on these reports or resolutions. I thank you. Yes, only we are working on it, and this is related to what we just talked about a few minutes ago. When, uh, because you see, before I put anyone to task, I first put my officers to task to get for me information. Then when we go to a meeting, I say, I need ABCD. So we are working on it, and we are going to work with the Prime Minister, and they will come. Yes, Honorable Musasizi. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, in respect of what Honorable Musare has said we have reports from accountability committees which are considered by the house and we are asked to, to produce a treasury memoranda the period given to us normally by law is six months within which we must report back to parliament on the actions we have taken Right Honorable Speaker, I wish to inform the House that we have always complied with this uh, provision. However, there are other reports where you direct us to report within a given period, say one week, two weeks or so. Here, in uh, many occasions, we have fallen short to comply with your timelines. I wish to invite members and your staff that emphasis when they are, when they are, uh, when they are analyzing, emphasis should uh, be more on directives which require us to report within a given timelines within w without necessarily focusing on the treasury memoranda because on that one we always comply. Thank you, <coughs> right honorable speaker. Yes, honorable Mr. Sizi, you are right and we talked about this yesterday because action taken reports provided for under rule 220 of the rules of procedure are very clear. Okay? On re on 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 re on re um, uh, auditor general's uh, reports processed by committees are the ones where we need the treasury memoranda and indeed six months you've always complied and the reason as to why you comply you know <laughs> also you know we, others have your own pressure your partners uh, okay imf ah, like you've whispered imf is always putting you on pressure now but also like how imf puts you on pressure other reports which imf doesn't even know about are also critical to this house okay so and those reports, we do consider a period depending on the urgency of the matter. If a matter is very urgent, we usually, sometimes we can give one week, sometimes two weeks. Usually we do three months, but depending on how urgent the matter is. So, uh, but we are going to sort all this. So on Treasury Memoranda, we are up to date. The Minister of Finance has done his job. I think Mr. Sis wanted to put that on record. Yes. Honorable Christine, and then... Thank you very much, Right Honorable issue. Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I rise on the matter of urgent national importance about the digital X-ray machine of a Tutor Hospital that has taken over five years without repair. Right Honorable, we started following up on this machine since 2018. As leaders of Kumi, we have made efforts to go to the Ministry of Health and yet information we are given is that that machine can only be repaired by a regional workshop. When we went to the Minister of Health, we were given information that the contractor was procuring spare parts from out. Up to date, Mr. Speaker, my people of Kumi District are suffering a lot 
We don't get X-ray services, neither do we get scanning services in a Tutor Hospital. So I want to find out, Mr. Speaker, what the Minister of Health is doing to that effect. So my prayers are, one, that the Ministry of Health takes this as urgent matter and have the machine repaired as soon as possible. Number two, if the Ministry cannot have it repaired, right Honorable Speaker, let a step be taken to procure a new machine for a Tutur hospital. And finally, those who caused a lot of mess that to date the machine is not repaired, they should be brought to book, right on board speaker, because we, need to, we don't need to play around with government resources. Thank you. I beg to pray. Honorable Minister. Uh, thank you so much, right honorable speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I want to appreciate the members' concern, which is a very big concern. And uh, in her statement, she's saying from 2018, and uh, it would be unfortunate if that is what has been. But I've been in most hospitals, and we have been doing a lot. I'm aware that there are some X-ray machines that uh, we are brought in which don't have spare parts. And uh, if a tutor hospital is one of them, I take it upon myself, right honorable speaker, to follow up this matter and to have action on this matter. And we shall work with the honorable member to ensure that something is done with emergency. It, it needs. Thank you. Uh, thank you, honorable minister. So um, let me just have the minister for KCCA reporting to us on their field visit, and then we go to the petition. I thank you very much, uh, Right Honorable Speaker. The question was raised yesterday about uh, the concern about the schools. This morning we have sent a team of technical people to those schools, but by the time I left office they had not yet come back with the report, and I promised to report tomorrow when they have given me a written report about the schools. And public health has been there, and uh, Minister for ed the, the Education Committee has been there. So they are not yet back from the field. But they are here. Chairman uh, Committee on Education? No, the the, the KCCA group. Me, I sent the KCCA oh. group. Chairman Education? Uh, right Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, as the Minister of KCCA has put it, and as you remember, Honorable Colleagues, Yesterday, the matter concerning the contamination of water sources in Kampala following the release of sewage during heavy rains uh, reportedly by the two schools, that is St. Kizito, it's actually St. Kizito Secondary School and St. Annie's Primary School in Kabua and Urubaga. And the need for the Minister of Education and Sports and Kampala Capital State Authority to investigate the matter was raised and briefly discussed. So the speaker guided honorable colleagues that the chairperson and the deputy chairperson of the decade. Honorable chair, you're not making a report. The report yes. is from the minister. Yes. Okay, so don't take us through the So report. we visited right honorable speaker uh -huh. and honorable members. I'm, I went with the team of three members from the committee and honorable Sarah Penn who raised the matter. We are joined by a representative of the Kampara MP that is honorable Alozia Mukasa. We made an on-spot assessment. We made an on-spot assessment. Our brief findings is like this. One, we have established that the problem is much bigger than what was uh, brought here uh, on the floor. On, honorable, honorable Chair, I don't, I, I don't want you to give a report, okay? Because the report is for the minister. You see, I want the one who will take action. I just wanted to confirm that you have gone. Honorable colleagues, tomorrow is not far. Uganda is not ending today. Kampara is no, please, please, you know, Kampara is not closing today, okay? Honor Minister, come tomorrow. Honor Minister, are you listening to me? Yes, just come tomorrow, like you have requested, and you give the statement. 
the response. Thank you very much. All right. Yeah. Speak yeah, just let's wait tomorrow. Yeah, please, the team, you should connect together. Let's wait tomorrow. Okay. Uh, honorable colleagues in the public gallery this afternoon, we have a delegation of uh, pupils and teachers of Chamvuma Primary School from Ruka District. They are represented in Parliament by Honorable Kisa Stephen and Honorable Mbayo Esther. They've come to observe proceedings of this house. Please join me in welcoming them. Kind of stand up. Ah, okay. Yes. Um, equally, we have students from Global College, Mayuge and Mayuge Hills Secondary School. They are represented by Honorable Agure Bajire and Honorable Rukia Isanga Nakadama, right Honorable. They've come to observe proceedings of this house. Please join me in welcoming them. Now, uh, Honorable colleagues, in the gallery this afternoon, we have a delegation of artists under Uganda National Musicians Federation. Uh, they include the following, Edrisa Musuza, a.k.a. Eddie Kenzo, uh, uh, Shiba Samar Kalunji, uh, Joseph Mayanja Kamirion, Warukaga Shafik, uh, Nabawan Kalidia, uh, commonly known as Jasmine. Yes, yeah. yes, Lydia Jasmine. Karo Nantongo, Hamson ba Bariruno, Lucas Sam Rubiongo. Uh, that, that is uh, Levickson. Yes. Chigund Bruno. You know, Honorable Kayemba needs to be near me because he knows all their names. So, <laughs> yes. Uh, that's A.K. Bruno. Mm -hmm. um, Raymond Joseph Mugerwa. Yes. Our gospel. Yes. A ray signature. Ah. Uh -huh. Lilian Mbabazi, uh, who is the secretary and uh, chief petitioner. Uh, Chris Banina. Uh, Ma Magada Isaac. Okori Moses Buju. Uh, th that is uh, Coco Finger. Yes. Uh -huh. Kankunda Rose. Nina Rose, that's uh, Nina Rose. Ranga Sulaiman. <laughs> uh, 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 Honorable Kavand, unfortunately, I don't have their numbers. So, so I have nothing to share. So, <laughs> I, I see some of you are very excited. So, yeah. They didn't include the numbers on the list. Yeah. Uh, Mutevi Ramadan. Yes. Uh, you have to keep reminding me their stage names. And Onewakayemba also has all the numbers. So, Anne uh, 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 me. Yes. Kasag uh, uh, Fred Sebata, our historical. Yes. Kasaga Julius. Now, I've known uh, the average age of this parliament uh, f f from the way you've welcomed Fred Sebata. <laughs> yes. Um, Peterson Sari. Uh, Mugisha Richard. Karumba Michael. Yes. Martin Muhumza. Now, those who said by Ankore can't sing. Yeah. <laughs> we have a representative. <laughs> we, we even have our bumps. <laughs> um, uh, uh, George Kigozi. Uh, yes. Joe Steady. Yes. Yes. That's our Joe Steady. Yeah. Uh, Odora Dennis.
Ah, okay. That's a, uh, that's a clear confirmation that the Japadora can sing. Yes. Uh, we are yet to get a Musoga. Take <laughs> Emmanuel, Isaac. Uh huh. The, the Musoga musicians are in Paramin. So, yes. Uh, St. Ongo Emma, we have our very own uh, Rachel Magora. So, who does uh, good work. Um, Sewanya na Malcolm James. That's a Sewa Sewa. Yes, yes. Arionga Uzea. Muhumza Anton. I think Banyankora are dominating this list. <laughs> 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 Odiambo Joffrey. Ah. So the Samia are well represented, Honorable Macho. <laughs> Othieno Dedrick. Uh, Agaba Ezra. Laying Fortunate Agre. Kayuza Solomon. Seguja Madil. Lokutan Alex. Mandera Kenned, Jurua Joseph, Chobtunji Charity, Amodoy John Bosco, Awol Zulaika, Babidye Harima, Atwine Amon, Mugwanya James Robinson, Mama Wenge Jennifer, Owere Philip, Kokiriza Drake James, Ongom Jimmy and uh, Mubiru Vincent. But we have also uh, in members uh, in the chambers, Honorable Geoffrey Rutaya. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, and the manager of many musicians, Soroka Yemba. Yes. So, colleagues, like I told you earlier, we have. Uh, uh, their petition, which they passed on, uh, kind of... Uh, yes, Honorable Wanyanzi, you have a procedure matter? Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. As you were calling out responses from the front bench, I remembered that uh, before we went for recess, the issue of government availing resources to higher education <coughs> students financing board came on the floor, and uh, the Right Honorable third deputy prime minister promised to liaise with the government so that she comes back to this august house with a response why i'm particularly concerned right honorable is that universities opened and are capable but disadvantaged learners are stranded in villages would it be procedurally right that as other honorable ministers are bringing responses the right honorable prime minister is also asked to update this house on that matter yeah, uh, on, on quick, we've agreed. I've already guided how we are going to, to move. But this is a very, uh, it's an emergency issue. Minister for Finance, instead of me disturbing uh, the right honor of Prime Minister, have you provided money for this? Because we have students who are stranded. Mr. Speaker, sir, for the last few days, I have been involved in providing money to various votes. I need to go and check and find out whether this is one of the votes where I have provided money. So, Honorable Minister, tomorrow update us. Okay? Uh, t tomorrow update us. A crack kind of call the next item, which is the petition. Petition by the Uganda National Musicians Federation. Honorable Nyamutoro. I, I, I chose Honorable Nyamutoro being the youth MP. And most of these people, you know, and she's a national youth MP. 
Thank you, right honorable uh, speaker. And uh, I can confirm she also has a bright future. <laughs> huh? Right honorable speaker, the house has not uploaded that. <laughs> Thank you, right honorable speaker. The honorable Chemasweta has requested that I start off by requesting you to allow him see off Sheba as she's leaving. <laughs> Yeah, um, wow. I, 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 think, I think what is important is for, for us to give an opportunity to Shiba to first see who Chemasweti is before we. So, Chemasweti, you can come in. <laughs> Please, don't have a <laughs> right honorable speaker um, allow me start by laying on table a procedure honorable. I'm sorry to disturb my young sister the procedure that I'm raising is that history has had it about honorable Chemasweet <laughs> there's one time We were some place in Changwanzi and uh, he carried one of the female ministers and I don't know where he was going to take that lady, Honorable Bigombe. Is this procedure a right to allow Honorable Chamasweet with that history to follow Shiba? <laughs> Now, now, on a vocabulary, because I was also not sure of one of my sweat, I never made the ruling. So let's proceed. So I won't be culpable in any way. <laughs> Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, allow me first lay on table a copy of the petition by the Uganda National. Musicians Federation. I beg to lay. Right Honorable Speaker, the petition states that the petitioners are citizens of Uganda and members of the Uganda Musician, the Uganda National Musicians Federation, an umbrella body that is geared towards promoting, protecting, and development of the music industry in the country. The petitioners are alive to the fact that since the enactment of the Copyright and Neighboring Rights Act in 2006, some aspects of the law have been outdated in light of advancement of technology and emergence of international practices that have changed the nature in which the copyright operates. Right, Honorable Speaker, as a result, it is very prudent that this law is revised as soon as possible. Right, Honorable Speaker, in 2006, I was in primary school. And today, as a member of parliament, it simply means that for decades, the industry has never sought refuge. Uh, Honorable, can you, can you read the petition? Yes. OK. Because the petition was given to you, just read the petition. No, please, only under the petition. Thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. Don't listen to strange voices. Right Honourable Speaker, the petitioners are not just contributors to the creative industry, but are also contributors to the economy. And with the existing legal framework for distribution of revenue collected from callback tunes, which disadvantages the artists and as most of the revenue, benefits the telecom companies rather than the artists who should benefit more from their works. Right Honorable Speaker, the petitioners aver that in order to encourage creativity and innovation and as a way of growing the creative industry, the following proposals ought to be put in consideration by the executive and parliament while amending the Copyright and Neighboring Rights Act. One. 
revision of the charges for callback tunes to ensure a fairer split of the revenue collected from the callback tunes you see, in the percentage. Wait. Honorable colleagues, you should uh, study the mood of the speaker. <laughs> you, uh, you should study the mood of the speaker. Okay? Yes. Don't think I'm, I'm, I can't hear. You should study my mood. Please, go on. In the percentage of 60% to be retained by the artist and 40% to be remitted by both government and telecom companies. Secondly, right honorable speaker, imposition of a copy levy on devices used in reproduction of copyright protected works to be shared equally between government and holders of copyright and neighboring right registered under this act. Imposition of strict measures against broadcasters who use pirated content because it undermines the intellectual property rights of the artists, hence causing a negative effect on their livelihood. Your petitioners recommend a fine of not less than 5 million shillings to be paid by a person who is convicted of infringing the copyright of an artist. Right, Honorable Speaker, the petitioners suggest that the digital era needs to be embraced relating to the protection of the rights of artists in the digital domain, fostering innovation in digital content creation and facilitating fair compensation for online use of copyrighted works. The adequate capitalization of collective management organizations in order to empower CMOs to carry out their duties such as licensing, collecting royalties, and enforcing the legal framework on copyrights. Right, Honorable Speaker, the petitioners suggest that there should be an establishment of a clear and transparent structure for the CMOs that incorporate a high level of accountability, including regular audits and reporting meca mechanisms to ensure that royalties are distributed fairly and promptly to the rightful owners. Right Honorable Speaker, it would be prudent to the petitioners if registration and regulation of all third parties, including telecom aggregators who are involved in the distribution and dissemination of the copyrighted content. Requiring broadcasters to dedicate 90% of airtime to Ugandan music as a way of promoting local content and supporting the development of the industry in the country. Right, Honorable Speaker, the petitioners suggest that we encourage the Ugandan models, actors, actresses, and artists in the advertising, promotion, influencing, and endorsement of products by companies in Uganda and developing Ugandan publishers through the imposition of higher charges of publishing licenses for non-Ugandans as a way of empowering the local creative industry. Provide employment opportunities for local content and help build a distinct national identity in advertising. And lastly, right honorable speaker, the petitioners propose that requiring aggregators of licensed Ugandan intellectual property to be domiciled in Uganda as a condition for operating to ease accountability since they will be subjected to the country's legal framework on the copyright law. Now, therefore, right honorable speaker, the humble petitioners have a main prayer that seeks your indulgence to task the Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs and all relevant authorities to amend the Copyright and Neighboring Rights Act 2006 and incorporate the above proposals. I beg to submit. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, please. Now, honorable colleagues, I know this is a matter a few colleagues have been uh, uh, following upon. But you cannot stop members of the public from petitioning. Rule that is very clear. At any time. Because for them, they don't know what you're doing inside here. They are not privy. Okay? Oh. Now... 
maybe I need to, to inform our visitors that for you, you're not supposed to clap or... Uh, I think they were not briefed by our protocol team. Yeah. Uh, you appreciate at heart. So, so they have their issues. I know Attorney General has been making strides. Attorney General, you want to make any comment on this? Thank you very much, Right Honourable Speaker. Indeed, after a given period, the laws require to be saved and updated. I do understand our musicians' concerns. Our chambers have been working on this law. But we will come the petition. We shall work with the committee and see how to improve it and accommodate their interests. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Now, Attorney General, I want to refer the petition. Um, I want to handle this petition in two ways. One, there are issues which are all hanging fruits for our music industry. These people are losing a lot of money, especially to the telecoms. These ringtones you're seeing being used and all that, some people are benefiting and some of these musicians are earning zero. Now, if you are to wait around six months, how many months of processing a row, they are losing revenue. It's like you uh, having your own business, just leaking. Someone is taking proceeds out of your business and you're not getting anything. They have aggregators and uh, I know that industry of aggregators very well. I know it very well. I've ever owned a business in that line, so I know it deeply. So they have aggregators who are, you know, you find a song which you pay 1,200 shillings, an artist gets like 70 shillings. Some of them get zero. Okay? So what I want to do is, on the issue of the law, Attorney General, I'm going to give you the petition. But on the issue of content of musicians which is being used and they are not paying and yet they are earning. I want the committee on ICT the committee on ICT to handle and report back to this house within 30 days. You wanted to say something? Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Right Honourable Speaker, for the opportunity. On 21st July 2022, my comrade Honorable Hilary Chiaga was given leave by this parliament to process the amendment of the 2006 Copyright and Neighboring Rights Bill. Law, Uganda Law Reform Commission took it over. We are, we are now approaching one and a half years. We haven't got any feedback from them. So my prayer is the Antony General's Office handling this should speed up and expertise because the thieves are stealing yet the industry is suffering. Thank you very much, I don't know speak. Now, now, honorable colleagues, you can see why, or why our, our friends are petitioning all this period. Attorney General, what is the problem? As honorable Nwagaba and honorable Mshemeza. Yeah, thank you, right honorable speaker. I thought I would give this information. The enforcement body in respect of this particular law is the Uganda Registration Services Bureau. And referring this matter to the ICT committee, in my view, may not get the proper results. But however, there is also a wide literature in respect of case law in respect of ringtones. As we wait for whichever committee or for the Attorney General to amend the Act, I would invite the fellow artists to consider using the courts of judicature to get remedies. But the enforcement authority is the Uganda Registration Services Bureau. Yeah, thank you. You see, Honorable Nwagaba, what we are saying is simple. I've interacted with these people. Other artists in other countries are earning billions out of ringtones. But here they are not. Okay? And the committee responsible is the committee on ICT. 
when people come here to petition and they need our urgent help. But that's why I have, uh, I, I have said we handled it in a two-way approach. So that the committee for ICT interacts with these agencies that are utilizing the content but are not paying. Even URSB, I know it's under committee on legal, but it can also appear and show the challenges. But in the meantime, the biggest chua, Attorney General, is us having the role. Okay, is us having the role. Ono Mushemeza. Right, Honorable Speaker. Some time back, I raised a matter of national importance, and you are in the chair. And one of the issues I raised was that very issue on the callback tune, uh, uh, expenditures and uh, uh, copyrights, and even the money for the deceased on the mobile money. Uh, right Honourable Speaker, I referred the matter to the Committee of ICT. I appeared to that committee as a first witness, and I'm aware the process is going on. Are we procedure moving well to refer the same matter which is already ongoing to the ICT when the matter is being considered? Yes, only we are proceeding very well and extremely well. Because you, there, is no, uh, there is no problem adding additional information. Because you see, they might be handling, but none of these artists has appeared. Now they, it is, uh, 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 or, or one group appeared, another one didn't. Okay? Or you can even appear, and I feel me as an individual, because, you see, colleagues, I have a petition, and it is signed by, um, these are 63 plus 27, Plus 19. Artists, you can't, you, you can't ignore their voice to say internally you're handling the matter. No, what you do, you refer to the committee. On top of what you're handling, listen to this petition. That's it. Honorable colleagues, let's note uh, uh, Honorable Bigger Rose and then Lop. Thank, thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, this morning we're looking at innovations in this country. And honestly, we could not proceed because of the lacuna and the gaps in the Copyright and Neighbors Act. I honestly want to agree with you that this should have been done yesterday. And I promise you my back, I'll be able to go to ICT to listen. Why give, me the, the, why give me the back? Huh? Oh, oh, why? Yeah. It's, it's a Terego way of saying I'll give you my support. Okay, okay. <laughs> because in Terego, we carry babies on our back. Okay. There's nothing big about uh, that. Thank okay. you. You know, we have one national reader who said, I'll put my behind. <laughs> now this one is putting the back. So, <laughs> Lop. Uh, oh, be, Lop. Lop. Now you have your member. Let, let him say something. Uh, 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 thank you, Bashir. thank you, right honorable. I don't know Namuga, Namuga. You are shadow minister of every <laughs> of everything. Thank you, right honorable. Uh, the matter of the artists, of course, we understand the pain they go through. We appreciate the brick they add onto national building. And as a member of the ICT committee, I want to assure the artists present today, on behalf of others, that we are going to leave no stone unturned in ensuring that the rights. The efforts of our musicians and all others in the art industry are catered for and much respected. Tomorrow, I want to inform the House and the artists that as the member of the ICT committee, we're expecting to meet these uh, brothers and sisters to forge our way forward to see how best the art industry can prosper in Uganda. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Much obliged, right honourable speaker. Right honourable speaker, like the honourable Kayemba Solo observed, that on the 21st of July, this house graciously offered leave to honourable Chiaga to proceed with the private member's bill, and he was uh, seconded by the honourable Rachel Magola, one of the more prominent assets in this land. 
to go on with the amendment. Of course, the, uh, the process, right, you are aware of the private member's bill has very serious inordinate challenges that we encountered. However, we were able to have meetings with the Law Reform Commission, which under the law is supposed to move these amendments in earnest, but they were sleeping on duty. We had uh, a meeting with the Law Reform the Office of the Solicitor General and URSB. And the, the issues we had with the URSB was that even before you amend the law, like you observed at one of the speaker, there are low hanging fruits. And the issue of enforcement came to bear that the URSB is sleeping on duty in as far as enforcing the basics is concerned. So enforcement is a challenge and a problem. However, Rachel Speaker, this is not the challenge. Two weeks ago, I received a copy of a notice from the Solicitor General inviting for another stakeholders meeting of the same law. Will it please you, Rachel Speaker, to give the Office of the Attorney General timelines to clear all pending consultations so that the member can finally move the bill, including the Minister of Finance which was consulted to notify Parliament if they have any reservations regarding to granting a certificate with financial implication of the speaker. W what is so strange is that uh, I see government looking for revenue, chasing hawkers, you know, street vendors, looking for small, small revenues. This industry is 100 times bigger then there's so many small things that are really occupying government or get revenue. I wish you have an idea. So what happened to imagination from government? They're looking for small, small trinkets for revenue. When you have an obvious industry that can support government, right on speaker, I beseech you to give these government entities timelines. That's the best answer for the industry. Timelines. We cannot legislate endlessly when we have people losing time, momentum, and motivation to create. It's not about art salon, it's about writers, it's about poets, it's about, you know, comedians and everyone. Right on the speaker. This house needs to give timelines, which we are going to monitor religiously to ensure that they develop upon on this bill, right on the speaker. I so pray. Thank you. I, I, I totally agree with you. Uh, Attorney General, where is the problem? before you know right honorable speaker i do understand the lops concerned about the delay but if we are to make a law that uh, satisfies the interests of everyone we have to do the requisite research. We have to be critical and meticulous at whatever we are doing. So I can uh, inform this house that we are on the right track. Maybe I can file a report specifically on this particular law in the next two weeks. Yeah, thank you. Now, um, what I've observed is there is a, a working relationship now. I, I don't know whether you feel it strong, whether you're making progress with it or not, Lop. But uh, yeah, le let's, uh, let's give ourselves 30 days, okay? Let's give ourselves 30 days, which is, uh, I, I think, wh which is okay. Otherwise, also, the mover slept on a job. Uh, reason, reason being, you know, if government doesn't give you a certificate of financial implication, according to our rules, after 60 days, we deem it to have been issued. Otherwise, government should come out and say, we, we are giving you the law you're bringing is in contravention of Article 93 of the Constitution. It has a charge on the consolidated fund or not. If you don't, once you've got a leave of parliament, then uh, you come here for first reading. And then sometimes they wake up. Uh, we'll use it, but I'm appreciating the fact that the Attorney General's office and uh, the move and lope are coordinating and I hope in 30 days we should get a very clear update. 
I can see everyone is anxious. We are waiting for that law so that we unlock the potential of this very, very critical sector. No, when I'm told you had uh, anything to add? Right, Honorable Speaker, the law elaborately spoke my mind on oh. the issue of time frame, but allow me to appreciate you, Right, Honorable Speaker, for taking part in it concern in this issue. I'm certain that history will take pride in your leadership because the talent sector is the only avenue that we have to answering the unemployment question. Thank you, Right Honourable. When I retire, that's where I'm going. So I need a <laughs> I need fight for the sector. <laughs> and many of you colleagues will join me. But uh, Honourable Guzuri uh, uh, had suggested to me something. He said when they're appearing before the committee, they should appear in a region so that it's not just a Kampara affair. Uh, uh, that. That one I will, um, I will detail it in the terms of reference when I'm forwarding the petition. Uh, thank you. Uh, colleagues in the, in the gallery this afternoon, uh, we have speakers, not deputies, but speakers from Western Region Districts, some of the Western dis or Region Districts, the speaker of, uh, of Ruampara, uh, yes, Chiruhura, Kazo, Ntungamo, Shema, Ivanda, Ahoima, Bundibujo, Abuhenju, Kagadi, Kakumiro, uh, Ruchiga, Shema, Mbarara, Chikube, uh, Kasese, Kagadi, they've come to observe how we are running the house and they'll be advising me as speakers, they'll be advising the deputy later on on how better to run the house. Okay, uh, thank you for coming, uh, friends. Yes, Honorable Sarah, procedure. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, now that we have speakers, from different districts, although they are in Western Uganda. <laughs> Some time back, right honorable speaker, I think it was in August, I raised the issue of the Ministry of Local Government failing to give stamps to the LC1 chairpersons. And this problem is still prevalent. Right honorable speaker, the minister did pledge to follow up with the Ministry of Finance to ensure that they have the necessary resources and take the stamps to the LC1 chairpersons. Right, Honorable Speaker, we extended the term of the LC1 chairpersons and therefore they are there working. But these chairpersons do not have the stamps which are key in, in doing their work as LC1 chairpersons. So, Right, Honorable Speaker, the procedure issue is, is it not a procedural right for the Minister of Local Government. I had seen her here to give us an update on these stamps for the LC1 chairpersons. Thank you. Uh, Minister for Local Government, but even if Local Government is, is not here, had pledged the task for money from finance. Finance, did you give the money? <laughs> yeah. Uh, for stamps. You, you know, if there is any min oh, minister for local government is here. Uh, yes. Uh, let her first. I hope you heard. Oh, no, minister. What okay. She's always here with us. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. We had the first batch of requisitions from local governments that didn't have. We ordered, we gave out. There is a second batch. And I do promise that we shall assemble those requests to the printing press and distribute them accordingly. I'll take it seriously, sir. But, uh, on, on our Minister, these people are working. Uh, when, when? Right, Honorable Speaker, the first batch took us a month and a half. May I promise that I'll do everything possible to ensure that within one month, we deliver it, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. So in one month, you'll come back and update us. Okay? 
Thank you. Uh, next item. Item number three, laying of papers. Three one. Report of the Committee of Tourism, Trade and Industry on the due diligence oversight visits on Co the committee chair. Divok. Now honorable colleagues, you can see honorable chairman sweat left a long time ago to the uh, to lay a trap. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh honorable chair committee on trade. Oh, whenever Chema Sweat, I need in the house. <laughs> uh, at least, if anything happens to Shiba, we are sure it's not Chema Sweat. Uh, he was here, we all witnessed. Yeah. It's whenever you have 10 minutes. Right, Honorable Speaker. I beg to lay on table a copy of the report of the Sectoral Committee on Tourism, Trade and Industry on the due diligence oversight visits on the pre-export verification for conformity, commonly known as PIVOC, service providers in general goods in Dubai and India. I beg to lay. Mr. Speaker, sir, I beg to lay the minutes for the meetings that process the report. I beg to lay. Right, Honorable Speaker and Honorable colleagues, I'm aware I have very little time. The report has been uploaded, so I want to believe that members will be able to read through. Honorable Speaker, sir, On pursuant of Rule 34 of our Rules of Procedure of Reporting to the House by the Committee, I go straight to the introduction of the report. Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Members, Article 90, Clause 1 of the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda, Rule 15, and Rule 156, Rule 159, 187, and 189 of the Rules of Procedure of Parliament, and join committees with the authority and powers to, among others, research, investigate, and carry out oversight functions with respect to ministries, departments, and agencies under their purview, and make appropriate recommendations on them. It is against this background that some members of the Sectoral Committee on Tourism, Trade, and Industry carried out oversight visits on some of the newly procured pre-export verification for conformity, commonly known as PIVOC, service providers in general goods in Dubai and India, to establish their capacity. The oversight visits were conducted from 23rd to 29th February, Honorable Speaker, 2023. The delegations comprise of 12 members of parliament and six members uh, went to Dubai, six members to India. The details of the membership is in the report members can go through. Right, Honorable Speaker, UNBS, which is the Uganda National Bureau of Standards, is a government agency established by an act of parliament, UNBS Act Cap 327, it became operational in 1989, enforced under the Ministry of Trade, Industry and Cooperatives. The role of UNBS is formulated, is formulation and promotion of use of standards, enforcing standards in protection of the public health and safety and environment against dangerous, counterfeit and substandard products. Right, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Colleagues, ensuring fairness in trade and precision in industry through reliable measurement system. Mr. Speaker, sir, and Honorable Members, where necessary, UNBS draws samples of products for laboratory testing. If the product meets the critical minimum requirements of the Uganda National Standards or approved international standards, USB, UNBS issues a certificate of conformity and once uh, the product does not meet the required standard UNBS no on, honorable colleague honorable chair you came to my office I briefed you I referred you to rule 34 okay 
but you're reading a report. You see, just a brief recommendation. Just you touch on the recommendation. Because such a field uh, visit report, I will have to give members time to read it, and then I'm going to appoint a date for debate. So members are going to read it. So just a few highlights of the findings and recommendations. Right, Honorable Speaker, much obliged. I was just on the background for members I'm, to appreciate. I'm, I'm really I proceed as per your guidance, Mr. Speaker, sir. I want to encourage members to read the details of the report as I proceed to the committee findings and recommendations. The findings are quite elaborate still. I want to inform members because in the report, the committee was able to look through the capacity of all the service providers contracted. And I want to inform the House Honorable Speaker that the service providers procured by UNBS are six in number. HQTS, Bureau Veritas, Intertech, SGS Gulf Limited, Quality Inspection Service Inc. Japan, TAF Rainland. Mr. Speaker, the committee was able to assess the capacity of all these six companies. And in our report, we went, we were able to elaborate case by case on the capacity of each company, right, Honorable Speaker. I want to proceed to general findings. However, Mr. Speaker, if you may allow me, just give details on only one company which had serious issues, Mr. Speaker, sir. That is HQTS. Right, Honorable Speaker, based on the findings of the committee, both in Dubai and India, on HQTS in terms of their capacity to, the me to measure to the task that was assigned to them, and of course also their physical presence in the countries where uh, they are supposed to work in ensuring that they inspect the goods and services coming to Uganda. Mr. Speaker, sir, the committee observed that there was a lot lacking as far as their capacity is concerned. And there were specific recommendations uh, that the committee came out with. On return, the committee invited UNBS to respond to those issues. And therefore, the committee, uh, after that, came up with a specific rec rec uh, recommendation case by case on all these six companies that were contracted. Right on the speaker, specifically on HQTS, the committee observed that the eligibility criteria required for a successful company to be contracted was not followed in, in, in the pre-qualification process by the technical committee, evaluation committee, while giving this contract. The committee also observed that HQTS didn't have an uh, office in India, both India and Dubai, even in Uganda, which are all mandatory requirements, Mr. Speaker, sir. And right when we speak specifically for HQTS, the committee submitted uh, this, this uh, recommendation that UNBS should terminate the contract with HQTS. The second recommendation, Honorable Speaker and colleagues, the, the committee recommended that DPP should investigate the circumstances under which HQTS was awarded this contract. Cost was awarded fraudulently, Mr. Speaker, sir. I want to request members to look through the report in details as I move now to summarize with the general findings and no, honorable, general recommendations. No, honorable, that's enough. On the recommendations. Th that's enough. That's enough, don't mind. Members are going to read. Okay? Members are going to read. So, uh, honorable colleagues, I'm right going to. Speaker, I now. I have laid the report and copies of the documents. Yeah. I want a back to report to this August House that the report be received for onward procedures of adoption. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Th thank you, thank you, Chair, uh, for the good work. Uh, I know, colleagues, uh, the difference between other reports and field reports. The rules treat them differently when you're presenting, okay? So uh, I know Chair, it might have, uh, uh, she, she was prepared to present the full report. And then I made her present just a few highlights. But Chair, well done. Well done. So let members read. And then after reading, I'll appoint um, 
In two weeks' time, please crack. In two weeks' time, let us have a debate on this matter. We also defer the debate on sericulture. The report from the Committee on Science and, and, and Technology. I'm, I'm still proceeding. So, <laughs> so, uh, so also ensure that is captured. I don't want us to lose focus. The report comes and I promise we are going to have a debate and then we don't have it. Uh, that means that report is not adopted by the House. So the one for sericulture and this one in two weeks time I want us to have a debate and we conclude them. Oh, no, Macho, you had the procedure matter? Mr. Speaker, I want to appreciate the way you are guiding the House. Mr. Speaker, I rose on a procedure matter that the report that has been read by the Chair, as we talk now, it is under the mandate of the Ministry of Trade to regulate the service providers that do pre-inspection export of vehicles that are coming in the country. But due to the infighting that is in the National Bureau of Standards, as we talk now, Mr. Speaker, we don't have a service provider. Vehicles are stuck in Dubai. Vehicles are stuck in India. Vehicles are stuck in Japan and even on borders. And as a result, I suspect vehicles with health hazards must, must be entering the country. Mr. Speaker, I believe Honorable Minister Ntabazi, she, she, she's here. They declared through National Bureau of Standard and handpicked the company that the chair person has just talked about. And yesterday we hear the same company was given a monopoly. Moreover, we have very good companies, the two that we are working, a very good job, like a, like a EAA, and we are really oh, don't take that the market. Road. I therefore, Mr. Yes. Speaker, pray yeah. and request yeah. that the minister who is here, who has slept on the job as per the word of today from the LOP, and you, Mr. Speaker, should give a statement. Why do we have a monopoly? And why do we have vehicles piled in Dubai, in India, in Japan, when AEE and the other company was doing a good job? And why have you got a company that the chairperson has just talked about that failed? And again, yesterday was given a monopoly to, to, to work as a service but, provider. But Honorable Macho, you seem to be very updated on these matters. <laughs> what is it? Huh? <laughs> no, no, you see, you, you see, honorable colleagues, honorable colleagues, I want us when, when we are debating, okay, we don't leave room for blackmailers to go out and blackmail us that so and so is pushing for this company, so and so. That's why for us we are very cautious. We leave the procurement is done. In case there are problems, we come in, okay? Now, there is a statement used that the minister is sleeping on the job. That's a heavy roaded statement. So one of the minister proved that you're not sleeping on the job so that Macho can withdraw that statement. Thank you so much, All right, Honorable Speaker. And I want to thank the House for giving me this opportunity. My friend Macho knows that I'm one of the people who have been pursuing him because he's a, a cross-border trader. And uh, <laughs> we have our own issues at the border. So he, uh, <laughs> he's not a smuggler, but he's a cross uh, a trader. We understand. Yes, so uh, we've been uh, passionately working on trade together. He's just making a joke uh, in, in Parliament. Of course, I'm among the topmost performing ministers of this country. So, so uh, since Honorable Macho has confirmed that it's a joke, okay, jokes of that nature are not good to remain on the record of the answer. So Honorable Macho, uh, you can be courteous to your colleague, you have a better... Uh, in Mr. Speaker, sir, being a cross-border trader, my sister, Honorable Tavaz, always harasses us, and I was joking. It is a joke, I therefore want to withdraw. Thank you. But she should tell us why there is a monopoly. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now, beyond that, he raised the salient issues. Please respond to Honorable Macho. Thank you so much, Right uh, Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, you had guided, and uh, the reason why I kept seated, I thought maybe would come in two weeks but the matters which are at the border are critical and right uh, honorable speaker unbs 
has been summoned to my office almost twice. This matter came to my attention and uh, because they had taken a procurement as UNBS, they are the same very people to take the second procurement. It's not the Minister of Trade directly. So we've guided them because there was uh, an, a matter before the PPDA tribunal which was determined that these people should go back and pre -pro I mean reprocure at least two companies, not one. The guidance was given and uh, I'm going to be on top of it to see why the UNBS is not picking the guidance from the tribunal. And I want to tell you that this matter will be resolved. Thank you. Now, on Honorable uh, Kamuntu, so he's in first. Honorable Kamuntu. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I thank the Committee of Trade and uh, Tourism for a good report. Uh, right Honorable Speaker and uh, colleagues, for the last two weeks in the media, we have seen uh, UWA, the department under tourism, uh, a lot of money have disappeared for, for gorilla tracking and chimpanzee tracking to the tune of 60 billion. And the right honorable speaker, you are aware all the tourism roads are in a bad shape. And here money is disappearing. And the Committee of Trade and Tourism, it seems they are not aware of that uh, irregularity and fraud. Even uh, the Prime Minister, she has not even mentioned about the same. And uh, to me, who comes from Rwanda, where 90% of Guinea is found, where we have no single road, uh, every day we push oh, trucks carrying. What, what is the issue, Honorable? The issue is this committee should investigate the fraud that is happening under UWA, and they come with a report because it is a serious issue. But now, but colleagues, sometimes you are unfair to us. We were on the issue of <laughs> motor vehicle tracking, okay, and UNBS, and, uh, and, and now, Honorable colleague, because there are clear ways. Honorable Kamunti, you didn't come to my office to raise that matter, and I denied you. No, so this one, uh, Honorable Minister, please. There is a procedure how we handle these matters. I know I've been following up on that matter person I've been reading, and it's a very salient issue, but the way you've brought it, because there is a way we bring business in the house, so we need. But uh, uh, s since it's uh, a matter to do with uh, public funds, Honorable oh Minister, I saw you uh, on top of your game. Uh, would you mind updating us if it does not jeopardize investigations? Thank you. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. <coughs> and I'd thank uh, Honorable Kamoto for raising the matter. It's indeed true. And uh, unfortunately, this leaked to the press as a result of internal investigations that were already ongoing under the Ministry and UA. So, and tomorrow we'll be putting out a statement. Probably I can share that with Parliament. No, you see, Parliament does not go to search for, for statements in newspapers and what. If there is information you feel should come on the record. You see, this is a national record, even a thousand years from now. It's used by researchers, it's used by all kinds of formal bodies, and it's a formal information compared to newspapers. So you want to update the House on this investigation? Well, if need be, but I can give a simple explanation here. But if need be, tomorrow I can come before the House and give a proper statement on this matter. Please do, tomorrow. Thank you. Honorable Amos, you wanted to say something? On, on this matter of uh, PIVOC? Yes, thank you so much. Uh, right Honorable Speaker and colleagues, you can see the attention of the report is more to do with the uh, the providers of the service. And as a reminder, as a backdrop, 
of the reason why these providers were chosen is the inability or under capacity of UNBS. And when we decided as government or as a country to pick on these providers, the purpose was to build capacity of UNBS. Through you, Right Honorable Speaker, I would like to request that the committee goes further to investigate the capacity of UNBS and whether we should continue to have this capital flight to people who are not even helping us since we see other substandard products entering the country. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. That will come in the debate when we are concluding. We need it first to debate. And yes, we read the report, we debate, and then you can propose an amendment and uh, I will give further assignment. But, Honorable Minister, you see, this issue of motor vehicle tracking, it seems you're, you're having a lot of issues yeah, uh, uh, with these issues uh, which generate money on your side. Not you as an individual, Honorable Minister, meaning generally UNBS. Because I even saw the letter of your minister asking, you know, you had stopped uh, 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 the process, then UNBS goes ahead and extends for one farm and leaves out another farm. Now you ask yourself, so if they said the procurement process has a problem and these two farms are all part of the problem you have identified, why are you basing to choose one company say for you continue and this company uh, wait? I thought if they are all affected, they should be all affected. Either you stop all of them or you say no, we've extended for both of you as we, uh, as we conclude on the process. Because that is deemed to, to look like you have already concluded on this company for it, it's okay. Okay? So, Minister, you need to take further attention on this matter. And uh, on Tuesday, please update us on Tuesday on this issue of UNBS. UNBS is having uh, many issues. There are issues, Honorable Minister. You see, a good example, Honorable colleagues. UNBS, a company, for example, says, I'm producing this product, and UNBS says, No. You can't call it this name, it's misleading. Okay? You can't use it. Then they allow foreign products of that same name to come into the country. Now, in the process, what happens? Uh, 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 you find that what happens? Customers come looking for a specific product, let's say, medicated like medicated hand wash. You allow foreigners to bring in a product called medicated hand wash. When Ugandans try to do it, you say no. That is misleading. You can't produce medicated hand wash. And then you leave the market foreigners. Some, most of these products, Ugandans are producing all of them, most of them. Okay? But UNBS is not supporting it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very, very big, big problem. This one, of, when I read the minister's letter, where they were allowing, where the minister... A minister even pleads with UNBS. I don't know which power they have, <laughs> by the way. They make a minister plead. You, uh, you find a minister's political head. I fire you. Yes, if I'm a political head and your executive director of UNBS and you don't listen to me, I fire you. If the president decides to fire me, well and good, but I fire you. Otherwise, why are you a political head? Huh. A political head, political head is about to run it parliament for help. Huh? Over supervising your own agencies. Rob. <laughs> Can't be. Thank you, Reton Speaker. I would like to appreciate the chairperson for the report and um, I hope and pray that once the debate is concluded, uh, Parliament will supervise action taken. Yeah. Uh, why I'm raising the issue of action taken, Mr. Speaker, because we have handled other issues that are pending uh, parliamentary decision, yet the actors still go on. 
we have not left the controversy around the digital number plate issue. The Minister of Internal Affairs says the procurement is fraudulent. The Minister of Defense says, Minister of Security says all is okay. And uh, in between, Parliament is up as the arbiter and protector of public interest has not taken a decision on the matter. Right on the speaker. In the meantime, the actors outside the realm of Parliament are still progressing. I probably do not return here again to do a post-mortem on the same. But at least a minister raised a red flag to say you people are pretending over outright fraud. Not on the speaker. On digital number plates. It's on record. In this house, right on the speaker, on the 15th of August, 2023, the Honorable Mwanga Chivumbi raised the matter about another entity secured and procured for what called SICPA. South Africa, working on behalf of URA without a contract, the Speaker ordered that the Land Attorney General on 17th lays before Parliament that contract. Today is effectively the 4th of October. Let on the Speaker. So are we <laughs> doing justice to this space? Right, Honourable Speaker, I think these are the kind of uh, happenings that give actors with uh, intention to defraud the motivation to go on. If we do not undertake citizen arrest in this space, the fraud will not stop, Right, Honourable Speaker. And I'm kindly inviting for an indulgence over these matters that linger around the Parliament, but actors outside the Parliament believe Parliament will talk about it and then forget. It really breaks our energy and the skill motivation of this honorable house from doing their oversight duty right now, speaker. I so pray. Thank you. Yes, um, honorable colleagues, uh, for example, on the issue of motor vehicle, we gave the minister 30 days when I received that petition. In fact, there is a petition which came to the committee and the petition had been given to around 10 agencies. The, t the 30 days have elapsed, okay? So uh, the Minister for Security should report back to the House on how he has handled the petition. Attorney General, on that same issue, there were issues which members raised on the legality, like money for fines, which money is already gazetted to be for road fund. Now you go, you sign with someone that he will take it away. Then you ask yourself, is a signature, a contractual signature, uh, uh, above the law? If it's not confirming with the law, uh, how is it going to be implemented? Money for finance should be going to consolidated fund, and then it goes to the road fund. Should be going to the road fund. So what was the basis of saying someone can use it to pay for digital number plates? So these are, these are issues. Uh, I need... Um, I, I, I need the Minister for Security next week to come and uh, give an action taken report in terms of the petition of which he received because I stopped the committee on physical infrastructure. I said until further guidance after the Minister has. Then Attorney General, we shall also need to be guided on um, the issue of classified procurement because also I, I will discuss with Rope we see how best to handle them. Because if it is classified, and now it's on the floor of parliament, and every detail is being put here, is it still classified? Okay? Yes. So, we also need to look into uh, uh, issues so that, uh, so, so that we handle things in the right way. Uh, in the in, in right way. The one of SICPA, you are supposed to lay. What happened that on the general? Thank you very much, Right Honorable, right Honorable Speaker. I do remember that we committed to lay, and uh, probably we may have delayed for one reason or another. Allow me time, and uh, I pledge to do it on Tuesday next week. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Next. 
laying of papers, item 3-2, report oh, of the Auditor General. Uh, sorry, sorry. Minister, you had wanted to say something, Minister, for trade. Oh, you had finished. I was going to finish. Okay, then finish. Yes. Uh, uh. Um, right Honorable Speaker, the Minister is not going to deny that there are no challenges in UNBS. We would be lying. Because uh, the, the, the change of leadership and all that was because there were challenges. As we talk now, we have an acting uh, executive director who has just replaced the other one, the owner, uh, Mr. Biru. And because of those challenges, that's why a bill went out. So there are challenges in UNBS, that one we shall agree. Now, the, what we are going to do as the ministry is to cause a meeting, I think, with uh, the board, because the board is supposed to oversee the implementation of these some of these uh, uh, actions now the chairman of the board is still insisting that uh, EAA is not credi credible enough but still insists that a country can have one company to inspect in, uh, in uh, like Tanzania is having one company Kenya is having one company so he gave me that example and said Uganda can also have but let it be in good terms, well procured. Because if the terms, if these two companies all expired at the same time, and you have not carried out another exercise of, of, uh, uh, of identifying other new companies, then the two, all the two should have extension. That was my argument. And I'm saying if that one is done, then there would be no case for us to argue here. The procurement would have taken place and then they say you are not qualifying and you are qualifying in a free and fair manner. Thank as you. simple as that. Thank you. Now, Honorable Minister, we don't want to be involved in the procurement. In how many companies you want to give, it's you to assess and for us we shall come in to do oversight. If we find you gave one company and it's not doing the job well, then we come, we recommend. If we find you gave three and they are doing well, or one company is doing well, well and good. What we need is these things moving uh, very well. Le let's uh, just uh, uh, stop it at that. Most uh, obliged. Thank you. Um, uh, next. Item 3.2, report of the Auditor General on the financial statements on the National Social Security Fund for the year ended 30th June 2023. Commissioner. Right Honourable Speaker, I beg to lay the report of the Auditor General for the National Social Security Fund Annual Report and Financial Statements for the year that ended 30th June 2023. I beg to lay. Thank you, uh, Commissioner. The report is referred to COSASE for consideration and reporting back. Item 33. Laying of papers, report of the delegation of the Committee on Defense and Internal Affairs on a study to East African Legislative Assembly on the regional security matters. Chair. Right Honorable Speaker, I beg to lay report of the delegation of the sectoral committee on defense and internal affairs on a study to the east african legislative assembly on regional security matters from the 18th to 23rd september 2022 in arusha tanzania the recommendations the delegation then led by the chair honorable nyashikongo and the ebo team the report has been uploaded. I beg to lay. Thank you. Yeah, uh, colleagues, uh, uh, please read the report. I'll also appoint the date. Crack, you will guide me uh, when we shall be ready for the bed after looking at uh, the business that we do have. Uh, 
because rules at four three tells me that I shall appoint a date, so I will do that. I want to know, Minister for Education, is your statement ready? Is it uploaded? I want to confirm. Is it uploaded? Clark, if it's uh, uploaded, I will amend the order paper to allow a statement on Teacher's Day. Statement on the World Teacher's Day. Honourable Minister. Thank you so much, Right Honourable Speaker, for giving us the opportunity to present this statement to Parliament on World Teachers Day. Right Honourable Speaker and Honourable colleagues, the World Teachers Day is celebrated worldwide on 5th October each year to recognize the pivotal role teachers play in shaping the lives of our young generation. It is an international observancy day that was created by the UNESCO to show appreciation for the vital contribution that teachers make to education and development of nations. It was created in 1994 to commemorate the signing of the 1966 UNESCO stroke ILO recommendation concerning the status of teachers, which is a stand, standard setting instrument that addresses the status and situations of teachers around the world. This day is dedicated to raising public awareness on teachers' issues to enable recognition of their special value in our lives. Teachers constitute one of the largest national human resource dedicated to nurturing our young generation, and we look to them to guide our children in their quest for education. Teachers are frontline participants in education reform and are therefore critical to successful quality schooling worldwide. They are therefore, they deserve to be recognized and valued. We commend all Ugandan teachers for the devotion to provide hope in our children for the future of this nation. Right, Honorable Speaker and colleagues, our government is committed to provide quality education to all and teachers are critical ingredients in this process. Sustainable Development Goal 4 requires us as a nation to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote life life learning opportunities for all targets. We rely on our teachers to move this agenda forward as we ensure that every child in this country has the opportunity to exercise his or her right to access affordable education of equitable quality. Mr. Speaker, the Ministry of Education and Sports, in collaboration with the teachers' unions, are organizing the day's celebration nationally on the 5th of October, which is Friday, 2023. On, on Thursday, 5th October, I beg your pardon, Right Honorable Speaker and colleagues, it's Thursday, 5th October, 2023. The theme for this year's Teacher's Day is the teacher we need for the education we want a global imperative to reverse teachers' shortage. Celebrations will be held at two levels as follows, right honorable speaker and colleagues. Number one, the national celebrations will be held at Kololo Independence Grounds, and this will be presided over by His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, as the chief guest. Number two, District celebrations will be held in every district and municipality in this country, as has always been in the case each year on the 5th October. It should be noted that all teachers, both in public and private, will be celebrating. 
The general public, right honorable speaker and colleagues, is therefore informed that teachers countrywide will be celebrating their day on Thursday, 5th October 2023. And for that matter, they will not be expected at the schools. A circular has already been sent to all chief administrative officers and all schools. As I conclude, right honorable speaker, the purpose of this brief is to inform you and honorable colleagues about the day and the public and to invite you to join our teachers in this celebration. Before I sit down, Honorable Speaker, I beg to lay on table a circular for the World Teachers Day that was sent to the Chief Administrative Office and all district leadership on 28th September 2023 to allow our teachers to celebrate this day. I beg to lay and I beg to move and I thank you, right now, Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Um, I'll allow a debate of uh, 30 minutes on this, each one of us, uh, two minutes. Um, yes. Wow. There are known teachers. Huh? Huh. Now everyone is claiming to be a teacher. Uh, I wish you could be honest, like when I opened what I said, and the mothers. <laughs> Yes, so let me start. Uh, Honorable Nyach Kongoro, I pick uh, uh, this is Kamwenge. Yes, uh, colleagues, I want to do affirmative action first and, the, and the allow me to first do it. So, Kamwenge, uh, I, I will do Mamawi. Eh? Uh, I, I will do Bungoko, yes, Bungoko, yes. Uh, then uh, I will do. Is there one of colleague? The, yes, uh, the, the, that Masaka, that's Masaka. And, and then Otuke. Now, if you've spoken today, please, you know your chances are very limited. I'm going to allow you colleagues two minutes each. I'm going to pick. If you've spoken today, whether it was a greeting or order, <laughs> hey, hey, Honorable, I'm going to allow you. Yeah, yeah. please, Thank two you. minutes each. Thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker, for giving me the opportunity and for the Minister to bring this statement which we've been yearning for. We want to congratulate the teachers for the good job that they are doing and we are all products of teachers. Right Honorable Speaker, when we were insisting that uh, some of us are going to participate in these celebrations, we had a cause because teachers have their issues and as members who represent teachers in parliament, we cannot miss out really participating in their activities. However, it is coinciding with parliamentary sitting. I don't know how we are going to resolve that. We don't want to be caught up by saying that we are dodging parliament, yet we want to go and participate with teachers. Right, Honorable Speaker, when we were doing PDM rounds, we identified that there are some teachers who had applied to be part of the beneficiaries. But however, they are stopped because they are earning from government. But when you compare the peanut money that they are getting in terms of salary, especially the arts teachers, it is really terrible. And they cannot do any other business. What they, we, we were told was that they were given money in their circle. And most of the teachers have never accessed that money. What I wanted to know from the minister is, was that money released to their circles? And are those circles existing such that those teachers can go to their circles to get money rather than being tossed between PDM and other uh, uh, f facilities that government has put in place. Thank you. Kamange. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, for the opportunity. And I would like to thank the Minister uh, for her paper that really treasures teachers 
as she was reading. Uh, tomorrow, being uh, the, uh, the teacher's day, we are all happy for them because we are because they are. The parliament is because teachers are there. The nation is because teachers are there. So uh, I also take this opportunity to congratulate uh, them so much and how I wish we, this day is actually treasured more than it is because if we are told that we are invited to go and participate in the celebrations, the national celebrations at Kololo tomorrow, and, the, and His Excellency is the chief guest, and we have not yet tested co for COVID. Some of us really have passionate, passion. We are so passionate about, about teachers. If we, we were invited on time, we would have te taken COVID test, and we would be there physically, because we are what we are because of teachers. I thank you. Thank you. Mama, we thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. Right Honourable Speaker, I want to thank the Minister for being so proactive and uh, bringing this report in time to the House here. Right Honourable Speaker, we are all teachers in one way or the other, but teaching being a profession, I want to thank all the teachers and congratulate them upon the work they are doing in this country. Right now, Speaker, as we commemorate the day, we must not forget about the welfare of the teachers. In most times, when I talk about this, I know it's going to raise a lot of issues, and this is issue which we have been talking about in this house here. But it still remains a challenge. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, my prayer is that much as there are challenges, but let the issue of welfare for teachers being taken very seriously and in time we need to look at this one after the other. Secondly, right now, speaker, as we celebrate the day, we are being heard that tomorrow we have a session and it is true there are other international days which are highly respected in this country and I'm wondering why we are not respecting the National Teachers Day. Uh, that we, we need to join our teachers so that they're also happy and we are here because of them, right, Honourable Speaker. Therefore, I request we need to have a solution for this. If not today, but with time, let the Parliament also accord teachers the, the respect they deserve. I thank you, right, Honourable Speaker. Uh, thank you. Now, uh, Honourable colleague, please. Parliament has accorded them respect by even amending the order paper to accommodate a statement. It's not a public holiday. Okay, so the executive should do their work if they feel it's a public. You cannot come to blame parliament and yet you're a member of parliament. You don't play politics on the floor. Okay, to say me, I went and I chose the parliament that they should take this teacher seriously. Now even next time really, yeah, yeah that's not acceptable. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Honorable Speaker. I really want to appreciate the Minister for the brief report that he has uh, given us uh, in this house. However, Mr. Speaker, I know the nation is because we are. I'm a teacher myself. Uh, Honorable Speaker, we, we know very well, and it's mandatory, that uh, it's a mandatory requirement that uh, now our teachers have to study to a certain level for example, it has been uh, published that teachers have to study up to the level of uh, a degree level, whether one is to teach primary or P7. Now, Mr. Speaker, upon that I have two things. Like you do, we've created budgets for human resource development in other dockets. I happen to have worked in local governments, but we, had, we have chiefs are given uh, some support in terms of human resource development because it's mandatory they have to grow and develop in their line of uh, professionalism. I wish it would have been good that uh, the Ministry of Education raises or creates, creates a budget line to be supported by this parliament so that we begin apportioning some money to the Ministry of Education to help teachers upgrade given the fact that their earnings as we all know it's a little bit 
moderate, sometimes it cannot support them to go, to go further or to go higher in terms of professional development. So if we could uh, create that to give Ministry of Education some funds, that will aid teachers in terms of human resource development in their docket. I feel that would be right. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, uh, now that uh, this... Chibaju. No, please, uh, Honorable, have this spirit. <laughs> okay. We have a standard. Bo so blind, you know, speaker. Now you're even on the microphone when you're... <laughs> no, Honorable Andwasi has been an active member. He's not on maiden speech. Yes, Honorable Chibaju. I know you're passionate, but I want to give colleagues a chance. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, for the opportunity. Uh, I also join my colleagues in uh, congratulating our teachers on celebrating their day. However, I have a, a problem with the teachers, especially in my constituents of Shema North. So many of them were interviewed, and they passed the interviews to be deployed in various schools. But many of them have not been deployed. So I wish to request, everywhere I think, so I wish to request the minister to come up with a statement because they are harassing us in the constituencies. We were interviewed, we are qualified, we say we were told we passed the interviews, but up to now we have not been deployed. That is my humble my humble request to the Minister of Education. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Right Honourable. Uh, thank you. Uh, Sekabira. Uh, oh, no, Minister, I hope you are taking note of the issues. No, colleagues, I'll come back here. Oh, wow. Well, be, no, before Sekabira, Honourable Davis come, come. Then I, I come to Sekabira. Uh, thank you. Right Honorable Speaker, I join hands uh, in uh, uh, thanking the government. It's, it's a maiden speech, isn't it? No. Oh, um, if it's not maiden, then you recognize the teachers time. for their hard work. Me as Kamkama, I grew with a single parent who is a primary teacher, and I'm here because of her effort. So as we celebrate tomorrow, the National Teachers' Day. Uh, I want to put alongside this or uh, request. Uh, my prayer is uh, the government should consider uh, on the incentives of the acting primary teachers on duty and those who are retired. Above all that, above uh, alongside that, I pray for the government on their salary increment because their salary has been so low, and when they increase, they increase just a peanut. So I pray to the government, or maybe they bring a motion, we shall support it on their salary increment. I beg to submit. Thank you. Karamoja, let me first speak Karamoja, then I go to Sekagura. Yeah. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I also want to, to thank the minister for the elaborate and precise statement on the teacher's celebration tomorrow. However, Right Honorable Minister, uh, Right Honorable Speaker, there is a question of added to rich areas. And I want to urge the government to really consider allowances for the added to rich areas. I happen to be from Karamoja, and there are schools which are in difficult areas. And the government had introduced uh, added to rich allowance for these particular ad working Ugandans who are helping us to be who are who we are in this house. Nobody has not passed through a teacher. All of us here are proud because of the teachers. And so we want to thank the teachers of this country and I wish, I want to wish them a fruitful celebration. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, Honorable Kabira. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, I'm seeking for clarification because government had pledged to at least have a secondary school per sub-county. And I want to give an example in Ibutuntumula sub-county that has over uh, 100,000, for example, uh, 
students that are supposed to go for O level and A level, but we do not have a seed school around. And it makes it very difficult for the teachers to move to other sub counties where there are secondary schools that they have been deployed. I would therefore want to seek for clarif clarification from the minister when government intends to fulfill the pledge of constructing as many schools as possible in all the sub counties. Thank you very much. Asaka. Then I'll, I'll follow from Asaka. I'll go, is it Budyo? Is it Budyevo? Yes, the chance. Then I go to Veronica. I go to Otuke. I go to Masindi. Yeah, at Masindi. I'm coming like this. Now, colleagues, if you've seen that uh, I'm trying to dodge your face, you know, like yesterday I picked you. Okay? So, uh, so I'm trying to. Uh, yeah. Hmm? No, if given chance, I'll pick you. But I'm trying to see other colleagues so that they can also speak. Thank you, Lord Honorable Speaker, for the opportunity. I also add my voice to thank the, the minister for the report. Uh, in the report, uh, it has shown that really uh, teachers play a very important role. And uh, normally, right, Honorable Speaker, during such celebrations, normally challenges faced in various sectors are being forwarded. Uh, in this, I would call upon uh, the Honorable Minister uh, that uh, many challenges faced by te teachers are always being forwarded. Uh, much as we normally talk of being paid less, but there are also other challenges like uh, being overworked. For instance, in many primary schools, uh, you may find the number of teachers always corresponding to the number of classrooms. That means that they are always overworked, they do not get sick, they cannot get maternity leaves, and so many others. So because of uh, the coming celebration, I call upon the ministry always to, uh, to, to make sure that such uh, challenges are being catered for, such that uh, the loan for teachers to work effectively is being created. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, right honorable speaker. And I want also to thank the minister for education for a such a wonderful statement she has made before the house. And uh, I want just to request the minister that even me, I'm a teacher, by the way. Uh, yes, I'm a teacher as long as a clinical officer, but I'm a teacher. I started with the other one. But what I want to, to, to tell this August house is... Uh, which, which one did you finish? <laughs> teachers, <laughs> teachers are heroes. For sure, it is this profession where you just teach. There is no any, any late on the job, just the salary. That's why I praise the other country, for example, Kenya, where teachers are paid highly than any other civil servant. Even in Uganda, I want to urge that our teachers, more so the primary teachers, they, for sure, after teaching, you just wash your hands home, and you wait only for salary, not like these other jobs where you can have any other inlets. inlets. You know you are where, you are where, so... I request the minister to look into that. I want to thank you, right honorable speaker. Thank you. Now, now, honorable colleagues, for us, the inlets we recognize in the parliament are official inlets, <laughs> which is salary and you know, clearly given allowances. But when you say we are aware, honorable, we are not aware. I want it to be on record about other inlets. Uh, honorable Veronica. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker and the Minister for the statement. I also want to commend the teachers for the great work they are doing to the for the country. Looking at the theme of the day, the teachers we need for the education we want. It's a great theme. Thank you for that. 
but right but honorable minister if we analyze the theme how do we achieve what we want what education do we want looking at for us who come from far areas the villages the distance the teachers walk to reach to schools where they teach they reach when they are tired then what education are we expecting them to give to our students secondly most of the government schools they don't have staff quarters why don't we look at that so that each government school teachers have to sleep there so that they can deliver the education we want Uganda to have. I have a few prayers, right, Honorable Speaker? No, in debating, we don't have prayers. Okay. Right, Honorable Minister, I think we should also look at the ratio of the teachers to learners if we, we, are, we, if we are to achieve the education we want in Uganda. Thank you so much. Thank you. Otuke, then Masindi, then uh, Chemutai. Thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. I would also want to add my voice on appreciating our Minister for the statement. Uh, basing on the, 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 the theme of uh, this year's celebration, as, uh, as my colleagues have also mentioned, that the teacher we need for education we want. Honourable Minister, I think this does not apply to districts like Otuke. Because now when you say the teacher you need, other teachers are being motivated on how to reach. I was one time on the floor here, I raised my issues. My teachers are not being motivated, but districts that are surrounding my, my district, the teachers are being motivated. She has just mentioned, we have a school, a technical school in Otuke. The teachers does not have where to sleep, but you've employed teachers. I was one time at school, at times, you don't even find teachers at school. Because when a teacher sleeps far, a teacher does not have transport, a teacher does not reach in time. So if teachers are being motivated, please let, this, let it be a uniform motivation across all country. Thank you. Thank you. Cindy? Thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker. I want to appreciate the minister for the statement and appreciate my colleague teachers because I'm a teacher by profession and I practiced. We are going to celebrate the World Teachers Day at a time when we have primary schools, P7 schools, that are having five teachers. You can imagine from P1 to P7, but you are having only five teachers. And teachers start teaching in turns. Let these ones first go and play as I am teaching these other ones here. So I want to request that uh, the Minister of Education and Sports improves on the human resource in these primary schools. Then uh, there is also a policy of having a primary school in every parish. I want to assure you, in most of the parishes in Masinde especially, we don't have the primary schools. Then as I conclude, we are going to celebrate the World Teachers Day when the issue of the loan scheme is still hanging in balance. Most of our students who were not able to make it on government scholarship and could not, you know, the parents didn't have the money, are at home. The issue was brought here before the, the house. Some orders were given, but nothing materialized. I want to pray that the ministry equally works on the issue of the loan scheme. I thank you. But don't know if you are listening, we agreed to the minister tomorrow will update the house. Yeah, so, <laughs> okay. Honorable Felix Chematai, and then uh, Honorable Komakech, I'll pick uh, Chotera, I'll pick Mayanja, it's historical. Thank and you, right. Mapenduzi, uh, and uh, Moroto. Ma Thank you. On our Mapenduzi, yesterday, uh, hijacked, no, he, he got it from a member, they shared the, the two minutes, so I've given him, so that he can share the two minutes with Mouma. 
Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the Minister for the report he has given us. And uh, I would also like to thank the teachers. The teachers are doing tremendous work for this country. I am a teacher by profession, and I know what it means to be a teacher. Uh, one of, some of the things, some of the concerns that I have is about delayed promotions for teachers. Uh, some teachers have acted for so long, for more than 10 years, and yet when new schools uh, are opened, they always give uh, chances for those ones who are sitting teachers. They give opportunity to the sitting teachers, while the old teachers in old schools have been left sit, uh, on acting for very, very long. Uh, the other one is, uh, I want to thank the government for, this, uh, for, the, for the science teachers' uh, salary, which has been increased. Uh, they are earning four million, but taxation is so high. That is the complaint they are giving. Uh, they are taxing them 1.2 million. Uh, thank you. Yes, I want to welcome back. Thank you, right. Thank you, right, Honourable Speaker. I want to thank the Minister for the wonderful statement, but I also want to thank you for amending the order paper so that the Minister can present the statement. Right, Honourable Speaker, it's so painful to bury a teacher. A teacher was not died of an ailment, but died because of an accident. In Aru County, have been able to bury in the last six months 10 teachers who have died because of attaining casualties on their way to, on their way to work. Right, Honorable Speaker, I think it's high time government reinstates the norm of constructing houses next to school so that teachers don't have to move that long distance to reach school. But also, Right Honorable Speaker, the theme for tomorrow's celebration speaks of the teachers we need. Right Honorable Speaker, there is a science that was published and states that for anyone who wants to learn, the ages that are crucial are from one to nine years. It's so unfortunate that currently our country does not look at the teachers in pre-kindergarten schools. And that's the early age stages of learning. If we do not invest more money, more energy on the teachers who train our children at the learning stage, and we invest more money on teachers who are going to impact cramming, yet that the time of learning is usually from one to nine years, we are still going to lack. Thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker, for that time. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I too wish to uh, to thank the minister for coming up with this report. Um, I wanted to, I wanted us as parliament and as Ugandans to draw a deeper reflection on the theme for tomorrow's Teachers, teachers Day. I'm a little confused. This teacher we need, maybe it would have been better if the minister actually um, highlighted to us as parliament the kind of teacher this country Uganda needs. In Chotela, I do have teachers that first make chapatis and run to classes. I have teachers riding border borders. So this kind of teacher the country needs, really, yeah, maybe it would have been better in the, prime, in the minister's statement to paint us a picture of that teacher. Otherwise, I congratulate, I congratulate the teachers for you know, uh, reaching uh, this day. And as a country, we are here to witness what government has to offer and uh, show the appreciation that teachers really are part of us and we can do well with them. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Honorable. Yes. Thank you so much, Honorable Speaker and the Minister for the statement. Uh, you know, all of us are here because of teachers. If teachers had not done what they have done, we wouldn't have been here. But uh, as a member of parliament, we have teachers who move from their villages to come to teach. We have to embrace staff quarters within the school so that the teachers cannot walk long distance to come and teach our own children. As government of Uganda, we really need to give teacher conditions of teaching. 
When you go to schools, you not, not even get a teacher because they do not have a staff houses within the premises of the school. So this is one thing that government of Uganda has to work so hard so that we have teachers who are staying within the premises of the school for the better Uganda that we want. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ayanja. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Madam Speaker, for the opportunity. But Honorable Speaker, when you read uh, Article 40 in our constitution, it talks about economic rights. And uh, Article 40, 40 sub rule 1, sub clause 1 talks about uh, Parliament shall enact laws be to ensure equal payment for equal work without discrimination. Right on speaker, recently I visited Wachato City School in my constituency. I found out that uh, the head teacher is earning 1.6 million. But the teacher, just a junior teacher, is earning 2.8 million. So you see the discrimination in salaries. Uh, Madam Minister, we need to ensure this that discrimination is settled. And I don't speak at this parliament is on test because clause one says parliament shall enact laws so that these issues are settled. The teacher is earning 1.6 million and the junior teacher is earning 2.8 million. Seriously. The, because the junior teacher is a science teacher. So some schools, they are separating staffs that uh, for you, the, the science teacher have your, sta your, your, your staff room, and then the art teacher also have another staff room. So you see the quagmire in our schools. We need to settle this. Second, it's about infrastructure. In Akaseke, you found uh, Kanyale, you find Wachato, you find Chirinda schools. They have almost 600 students, but you, without enough desk, without... Thank you. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Uh, Honorable Minister of Education, as tomorrow we are celebrating Teacher's Day, there is a lot to reflect. As we are seated, tomorrow we are going to spend either no drinks or eats, where in Korolo or wherever we shall be. But there is a teacher who is waiting to take even he or her kid to the school. They have not yet paid fees, and yet they are teaching our kids. They are working under pain because you find a teacher on pension who has moved to district headquarters for five years after serving as a classroom teacher, looking for pension, is not getting it. As we are here, we need also to flash back. The teachers, through their system of operation, they are having now a new curriculum, which has its own accompanying challenges. We need also to focus on that. Tomorrow, me, I would even wish, we could not even say we are celebrating. Just go to Kololo, we pray to teachers, and we see we brainstorm how we can just make better education, better in Uganda compared to what we have. Because the situation where we are going, it's not that best to teachers, kids who are not eating, parents who are there sending kids when they don't have pens and books. I just need to focus on that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Then Amorata, then Mapenduzi, Frank. Then I come here. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. We need to know that teachers are main determinants for our next generation, including the next leaders. And in most cases, they spend more time with these youngsters, and they believe in them compared even how they believe in, our, in uh, us, the parents. We need to make sure, as the current leaders, that we motivate teachers in order to shape the next generation, including the leaders. Not teachers take that profession as a last resort, but to love it because they are holding our next gen generation and leaders. I thank you, Rachel, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much, uh, 
Co colleagues, please listen to the shadow deputy speaker. <laughs> Without interruption. Oh, thank you very much, uh, the speaker and the, the minister who did present this report. Um, when my profile was uploaded, it became a public document. And that is to the effect that I'm a, a son of a teacher, raised by a teacher. And then, prior to becoming a member of parliament, I taught law. To date, I want to borrow my submission from the Locus Classicus book of Robert Chiyosake, The Rich Dad, Poor Dad, specifically the dictum of risky is the new safe, safe is the new risky. It was safe then to be a teacher. And it was risky to be a businessman and the rest. But to date, many of our people, many of our teachers have found it very risky to be a teacher because it is a profession of paupers. And we have made it so because we less promote or motivate our teachers. Colleagues, members of parliament, we made here the Trade Unions Act, but when teachers choose to advocate for their rights, do we as members of parliament give them the enough buffer that they need to get when they are threatened by the executive and the forces that come hard on them? We never give them the buffer and they are forced back into class. Now we have a class of teachers, two classes, the science teachers vis-a-vis the arts teachers versing each other and saying Honorable Mapenduzi Thank you very much uh, Right Honorable Speaker I, I join my colleagues in uh, thanking the Honorable Minister but Right Honorable Speaker as I thank the Honorable Minister we shouldn't forget to talk about the inequalities that have been created in our education system during the COVID period, a decision was taken that our children should study online. I am sure you are aware that majority of our children, especially in the rural areas, were not able to study online because of the situation we understand. Right, Honorable Speaker, even now as I speak, there are parts of this country where children from primary one to primary three have to share classrooms because they do, not have, they do not have enough facilities. We have allowed our education system to create the kind of inequality that favors especially the rich. When you look at the results during PLA, UCE, USCE, the children who study in urban centers, the children who come from rich families perform better. We have allowed this to happen and I think the ministry should spend a lot more time in addressing this and how are we going to have these children fit in a competitive environment if we are not putting the things we need? Uh, right, Honorable Speaker, I think we need to care more about the children who come from the rural areas because otherwise we are creating a situation when they will not be able to contribute effectively because we are not doing what is needed. Honorable Minister, as we celebrate tomorrow, right, Honorable Speaker, I think we need to do a lot more in putting the infrastructures needed, but also providing the resources. I visited one primary school, right, Honorable Speaker. At the time I was chairman, you... Thank you. Moroto? Thank you. Right on uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity. I want to begin by thanking the minister for our presentation. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, three months ago, I presented a, a document that was uh, spelling out all the challenges that teachers face, especially in Karamoja sub-region. Uh, it's very clear that uh, Karamoja is one of the most remote areas in this country, and the same reflects in the education sector. If you look at uh, the schools, especially government-aided schools, uh, we still have a very big challenge. Uh, we have teachers that have nowhere to sleep, so they walk distances, almost 10, 15 kilometers. So this has highly affected. And then secondly, most of them are not even in the payroll. 
Uh, most of them are just, uh, they teach actually because they are trained and also because uh, they feel sympathy for the students. So it is very important for us to focus on such areas to see how we can be able to maybe give more support in terms of uh, giving, providing facilities or amenities that can support. Because now if you look at where the country is heading, we are always talking about sciences. Uh, if you look at even the scholarships, some of the scholarships given by government, they target mainly students that have, uh, that have studied sciences. And now how do we get these kind of students if we don't even have facilities? If you look at Moroto, we don't have laboratories, we don't have anything. So these students actually face a, a lot of problems. Uh, but mainly we have to look at the facilities for the teachers in terms of uh, infrastructure. If you go to like uh, a school called uh, Moroto High School, which has produced so many leaders, uh, in this government, but you find almost 3,000 students sharing one pit latrine. So they line up. So what time do they actually have? So it's, it's a bit difficult. Even water. They Thank you. Bataringaya Yeri Kediandongo. Then Moseven. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, for the opportunity. I also want to thank. Uh, the minister for the report she has presented. Uh, one, uh, right honorable speaker, we have problem with capitation grant. A hungry teacher cannot teach a hungry child. So I want to pray to the ministry to look into the increment in the capitation grant because I was a cancer at the district. When you calculate, a child gets about 300 shillings per day. 300 shillings cannot buy even a, a, a banana. So this one, I would like them to consider the capitation grant. Secondly, the facilities like accommodation for the teachers. And then lastly, uh, right honorable speaker, the private teachers. Our universities output very many teachers. So in this I have seen that we should fight shortage of teachers. But in Uganda we are not short of teachers. We are short of recruiting those teachers and paying them handsomely. So let's think on how to deal with this situation. Thank you very much. Thank you, right Yeri. Speak. Uh, thank you very much, the right honorable speaker. Thank you, the minister, for the report. Uh, mine is on uh, the qualified teachers. We have very many qualified teachers, but they are jobless. They are really jobless. What we can we do about this situation? And every year, more and more are qualified. So the, uh, the government should do something. You are sabotaging. There are some people trying to sabotage me here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so really we have to do something. So that these people, can, uh, these teachers can be employed. I want to thank, you are interfering with my... Uh, we, we have to thank the uh, private school owners for investing in the schools. They have really done a lot. They are employing this what? These teachers who are not qualified. But the government is not doing... Please. Wait for your time. I've said they have not employed... They, have, they are not employed. The qualified teachers are not employed. Kibiandongo? Yeah. Kibiandongo? So. So. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Kibiandongo, then go. I want to congratulate the teachers uh, upon Uwekura. their day and wish them fruitful celebrations. Right Honorable Speaker, during the recess, I moved in different primary schools within my district. And my teachers are worried. The grade three teachers in my constituency are worried. Uh, the, most of them, 
I was informed that 200 of them have been not, have been not able to, to benefit from the in-service program to upgrade their education. They are requesting that government should help them achieve this. They have not been able because of the limited salary that they are getting. The secondary school teachers, especially those are, are of the lower secondary schools, they are facing challenges in implementing the lower secondary curriculum. That, is, uh, that was envisaged, envisaged to provide hands-on practical skills to the learners, but government does not offer adequate instructional materials to implement this very important uh, curriculum. Therefore, even if government enhanced the salaries of the science teachers, most of them are still teaching theories in practicals. Therefore, government should review whether the reviewed curriculum is, being, is, is achieving the intended objective. Further to that, Right Honorable Speaker, our teachers are working under very, very poor conditions. Apart from lack of housing facilities for them, most of the, them, uh, their schools lack electricity, their schools lack water, the toilet facilities like uh, one honorable member has, has observed, our teachers are sharing latrines with the, with the learners, there is no privacy, and this... Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker. I would like to thank the Minister for the statement made. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, Honorable Minister, I would request the for government to start making payments for the schools that it has taken up as government schools. It has been a challenge in case places where government took up schools. Recently in my district, we had one of our private individuals who came back and closed the school as the term was going to start because government did not commit to its payment. Secondly, right, Honorable Speaker, as we celebrate Teachers' Day, I thought Honorable Sarah would hint on it. It would also be very good government to deliberately apprehend those teachers that push our children, especially the young girls, into the bad acts. What is done these days when a teacher is gotten from this school molesting or doing something to a child, they are transferred to another school and they move with those bad manners and the bad habits. Therefore, I think government should start apprehending these teachers. When they find you on the record that you have issues of being a molester or sexual assault, they should withdraw your teaching license. Thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker. Now, now Honorable colleagues, I guided you. I've guided several times that uh, don't listen to voices on the side. <laughs> okay? Don't listen to voices on the side because they take you off track. Because a colleague can, it can be a tactic for a colleague to disorganize you and, but also <laughs> our answered, our, our answered we look bad. Because you see, the only voice recorded is that one on the microphone. <laughs> now someone, uh, was this man quarreling with himself? <laughs> because on the record they are not recording submissions of the colleagues. But also, when a colleague is submitting, let us not interrupt. Let us not interrupt. Because at least if any one of us is interrupted, we can go off track. Buekura? Thank you, Rector Honorable Speaker. Uh, Rector Honorable Speaker, my issue is on uh, salary disparities, especially between the science teachers and uh, arts. Uh, the teachers are bothered. Uh, you can see the ministry is quiet, but the, the issue is very serious in the community, in the, among teachers. They are complaining bitterly. So tomorrow, as we are celebrating the, uh, their day, the ma main celebrant is the president who did it, who increased the, the salary for science teachers. The team also solved the issue for, for arts, arts teachers. They are doing the, uh, uh, the same job. They are doing a road to this nation. They are going through the same situation. Let them at least their salary also be increased and we have peace. And also the, the sector moves well. Protect me, right, Honorable Speaker. <laughs> Protect me because I'm becoming another victim. 
Let the honorable speaker, my, that's my major issue I submit. Thank you, honorable Wako. Um, uh, oh, my woman MP is a teacher. Uh, Mitoma, yes. So, honorable Wako first, then honorable Bashisha. Thank you. Thank you, right honorable speaker, for, for giving me this opportunity. <laughs> I also join my colleagues in thanking the minister for the statement she has just presented to us. Actually, I'm what I am because my mother was a teacher. Otherwise, I wouldn't have studied. So I respect teachers so much. But, right honorable speaker, our teachers are the most disadvantaged persons. They are the lowest paid civil servants. I remember in the past, around the 60s and 70s there, the districts used to give out bursaries to the pure students. And those pure students who got bursaries then are now the professors, are now the big people in the, in the country. How I wish our government also, we could start a scheme for these teachers, for their children to get bursaries Hmm? Because they earn so little, if their children were to get bursaries, really it would assist them much as they educate for other people, also their children benefit. I wish to submit. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Vashisha. Thank you so much, right, Honorable Speaker. Uh, I'm also congratulating teachers, especially, especially the primary school teachers. When I was doing my master's, I did a thesis on challenges of primary school teachers and their services. What I found out is wrong, I can't discuss here. But I want to give out some of the challenges they are facing now, especially the primary school teachers. Tomorrow when you go to all those celebrations, you will find that only primary school teachers are the ones in celebrations. Despite the low salaries they are getting. I was a secondary school teacher. I know the privileges. I'm not saying that secondary school teachers are happy, but they are better. At least you can, do you know there are some teachers who part time in five schools and they are secondary school teacher, which a primary school teacher cannot do. There are some teachers in the secondary who, have, who supply the schools. They are those who supply stationary. A, sec a primary school teacher cannot. But unfortunately, there are those who are earning 550, Honorable Minister. 550, many of them, that is what uh, they are earning. There is a school, right, Honorable Speaker, in your constituency. It's called the Chibungo Primary School. The head teacher has a camatris. He sleeps in the office. I was there last year. And lastly, there is a big challenge. I'm actually bringing a petition. I've already talked to the Minister of Public Service. When I was still a teacher, I would get my per diem out of station allowance. But now, twice there are schools in my constituents have been taking children in MDD. The last year they were in Chotera, this year, last two months, they were in Hoyuma. Seven days, five teachers, no single coin. I am the one who even gave them some money for supper. I'm bringing a petition, let those people have their out-of-station allowance. Because I used to get it. Teachers are all teachers, let us not discriminate primary school teachers. I beg to submit. Chiboga, Honorable Christine. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, and thank you for giving the matter that urgency it needed. Thank you, Right Honorable Minister, for the urgent statement. All of us here in our respective uh, professions, we are looking on the teachers to instill practices, look at environment. We are looking at the teachers to instill environmental management practices to our children. And all of you in your respective uh, professions, you are praying that teachers instill these practices. But right honorable uh, speaker, we would like to get uh, this day an appreciation to the teachers. 
would like to see the ministry appreciating teachers and at, at different levels. Different teachers at different levels face different challenges. If you interface with the teachers in the technical institutes, you will wonder. It, uh, they have a lot of challenges. And we commemorate the day, but we also welcome lamentations. But I remember there is a year when teachers tried to lament on the challenges they face, and the president was not happy with their lamentations. Cause yet I feel this is a day for bringing out these issues such that they give you uh, work and decisions on uh, the plans ahead. And then, uh, right honorable speaker, I am also calling on all of us here. We, is, many of us are parents, but when we go to schools, we mind about the advocacy of children, welfare of children. And little is uh, checked as far as teachers' welfare are concerned, upgrading. Very many teachers have, have upgraded, but the salaries are not upgraded. Very many teachers, we find that payrolls uh, are in another school, and the on-site teachers are in other schools, and the respect for the, for the on-site Right, Honorable Speaker, I'm concluding. Since, since you're the one who raised the issue, Honorable, and you I made us get the statement. I thank conclude. you, Right, Honorable Speaker, for the additional time. I have also observed the issue of um, payrolls. You find that uh, teachers allocated on a certain school payroll are not existent in that school. And when the time for payment comes, these teachers pay allegiance to the head teacher of the school where their names occur and appear. And you find that the respect uh, exacerbated by the other also uh, challenge of uh, uh, arts teachers and science teachers becomes uh, very, very eminent. And then, right honorable speaker, the issue of city schools, these are schools that have been uh, established by natives. I will give an example of Ruamata Seed School. Natives have suffered with these schools for the last three years, looking out for children. But when the government is taking it on, there are no promises for retaining any teacher, regardless of when, whether us as members of parliament have approved some of these um, teachers. They do have the necessary requirements, but government is promising to advertise all posts, no consideration for native teachers, yet they have uh, the required uh, professions. So I would encourage our, uh, all of us, we advocate that some of our natives are incorporated in these schools, not to bring alien species, I mean faces, in the districts when we also have educated ones. Thank you, Honorable. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Now, colleagues, Rule 52, Sub Rule 2, a statement made by a minister may be debated provided that such a debate shall not exceed one hour. We have reached one hour. Your rules stop me. I can't do much about it. But I have identified you. We have the one for fuel coming up. It's another very interesting and critical one, which I want us to debate. I know the face is uh, uh, Honorable Noeri and uh, Honorable Biarugawa. Uh, uh, so, colleagues, I'm going to give you a chance to do that. Here, the rules now stop me. I can't do much about it. Lop and uh, when I went over in, you will forgive me. I've identified. Uh, Thank you. I'm sorry. Right, I'm going to give you an opportunity on the next one. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Uh, first, I want to appreciate my shadow minister for the alertness that arose the. Uh, uh, the minister's curiosity to finally say something about teachers' day. Secondly, the theme of the day must have been chosen by a politician, not a teacher. The theme that uh, says the teachers we need and the education we want, that must have been a choice of a politician. Who is if you had teacher? asked the teachers to choose the, the theme... politician, who is the teacher? <laughs> well, I'm not so sure. Uh, probably... Some politicians prompting her for the theme. The teachers could have chosen differently. Maybe something like the government we need and the appreciation we deserve. Something like that. <laughs> <But> <laughs> right, Honorable Speaker. I, I spent three years 
in the School of Education, uh, two years in Postgraduate School of Economics, and uh, four years in law school. So education was my first love. And I am uh, a son of a teacher, a noble teacher. This is uh, a no thank you profession to which all of us must feel a huge duty to promote and protect. In the yesteryears, to be able to speak to the people and they listen, you are either a teacher, a lawyer, or a religious leader. By these days, teachers have been relegated to, to the backyard. And it comes from how politicians that treat them. With the indulgence, I challenge the minister before we consider her next policy statement to come out and clearly articulate to the house the plight of teachers. Because discrimination is affecting the quality of education and we know it. No education system is better than the quality of its teachers. Take an example. Right on the speaker, when somebody works in the ministry and enters the diploma and upgrades to a degree, they get a promotion. So you are either a head teacher or a deputy or a classroom teacher. Why haven't you thought outside the box about the teaching profession, like other careers, right on the speaker? So I want to challenge the minister to go and read our alternative policy statement on education. Before we become a government, you can keep, keep, pick some ideas that can really keep this country going so that we don't inherit really a dead, uh, you know, disequilibrated you know, sector. Look at it. We are offering very good counseling for you. Please pick the counsel. It's good. Um, and uh, you structure this sector properly. Right, Mr. Speaker, I congratulate teachers for their day, and I hope all of us in our communities will speak well about them, protect them from attack, from all manner of people, RDCs who have backed attacking teachers. You really wonder, and it's our duty to really protect teachers in our work here in the parliament, in our legislation, for the good of this country, because the nation is because of the teachers. I thank you. I congratulate the teachers for their work. Thank you, Rob. Hello, oh, no, Minister. Two minutes, you don't need to go through each and every issue. I thank you so much, right, Honorable Speaker. Allow me first and foremost really to appreciate you for the great respect you have accorded our teachers by amending the order papers, allowing the members to contribute all this time. This is a really sign that the members of parliament they cherish our teachers, they love our teachers, and indeed, our teachers are heroes. Thank you, members, for your contribution. Number two, Mr. Speaker, I may not be able to respond to all this issue, as you said, but I request that we receive this contribution. These have been very constructive contribution, contributions that are useful, really, to shape the teaching profession and also to help us in the ministry as far as issues of teaching profession is concerned. So we will receive this abstract and at appropriate time, some of them, we can respond where need be. But having said that, allow me just to highlight two issues. One, the teaching profession, as we've, our Ministry of Education has indicated several times, is under reform because this is a noble profession. We want this profession to be standardized, the profession to be valued, and indeed, as many have said, this is a profession that has shaped the nation. So we have got a reform. One of them is the national teacher policy, of which will come here right on the floor parliament at appropriate time. But one of the critical issues which have been talked about the salary, I may not say much, but concerning the SACO, the Minister of Finance will have given us a better position. Otherwise, we are aware 20 billion was a. Kind of situation? It was a presidential pledge for the private teachers through microfinance. 
uh, uh, sector support center and I, I, I wish the Ministry of Finance could really respond because all of us are really looking at this money reaching the intended beneficiary. There are quite a number of issues, recruitment, deployment, and, uh, and hard to reach issues. Mr. Speaker, I may not respond to all these issues, but allow me at appropriate time to receive, as I said, this uh, contribution. Some of them we will certainly give response to this house but by and large this has been really a voice for our teachers it was clear and loud lots of appreciation where there is correction the members have pointed out i want to thank you and i thank them so so much and thank i you. wish the teachers are uh, following this discussion and some of them, certainly, they are, uh, they, they are trying to, to follow from the TV and others. So we wish them a very happy celebration. I thank you. God bless you. Now, Chair, committee will follow up on these matters. But, Honorable oh, Minister, just one issue. Deployment of the teachers you recruited who are waiting deployment. At least that one, if you can. Mr. Speaker, this is uh, uh, teachers for secondary education. They were recruited last financial year. We recruited over 3,000 teachers. And half of those teachers were deployed. But those who were recruited received their uh, letters of appointment. However, they could not be deployed because of shortage of finances. This financial year, I did not have the figure, but there was an allocation such that half of them were deployed, but still some were not deployed because the finances could not allow the teachers to be deployed. But I want to pledge that I get really correct information because it has been in a stepwise position, stepwise manner. The recruitment was not all at once, deployment okay. because of the uh, response. Next week we will update the house. Thank you. Yes, we'll update Thank you. Tori, thank you, Honourable Minister. Next item. Item number four, motion for adoption of the report of the Committee on Government Assurances and Implementation on Government Assurances to Stabilize Fuel Prices. Uh, Honorable colleagues, this fuel issue is it's an issue generally we shall allow in the debate even the current issues that come in since we have the, the Minister for Energy. Uh, he will answer some of your questions to do with the fuel uh, sector. Honorable Secretary Ko is representing the chair. You know how we do it, 10 minutes. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I beg to lay the report of government assurance under Rule 34. Uh, under 34 to can give a brief on the report, the report of government assurance and the implementation committee on government assurance to stabilize fuel prices. I beg to lay. Still, right honorable speaker, I beg to lay the minutes of the meeting of the Government Assurance and Implementation Committee. I beg to learn. Right Honourable Speaker, uh, this very report is already uploaded. Members tabs, and I think I'll use limited time to give space for discussion. Uh, right Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members and Honorable Members um, representing this committee while the chairperson is on other duties and uh, under Rule 179 this committee is entitled to serve in its own capacity whereby its record and 
it can uh, please switch on it can record and scrutinize the assurance promises and undertakings given by minister of, given by minister prime minister president and vice president in the house from time to time monitor and evaluate the fulfillment of government assurances Exercise, uh, Honorable, we know the work of the committee. Go to observations Good. and recommendations. Much obliged, right, Honorable. Because it's Parliament which created the committee. So, <laughs> <laughs> your findings. Uh, right, Honorable Speaker. Our findings were as follows. The committee observes that the current management arrangement of the national strategic fuel reserves are just through a joint venture between UNOC and the consortium has been characterized by several several devastations and inconsistencies from the original agreement highlighted in the committee's findings, which raises concerns and may comprise UNOCO's ability to effectively execute its mandate. The committee further observes that under the current management, Arrangement the National Strategic Fuel Reserves at GST are primarily used by the government of Uganda through UNOC and consortium to do business in black trade in fuel. The committee recommends that the forensic audit be undertaken by Auditor General into the management and operation of the GST with the view of ruling out responsibilities of fraud and mismanagement of funds. Provided by the government of Uganda to you know to, to reserve that to reserve that I know I know it's okay uh, uh, that accrues from bulk purchases by the government of Uganda and the revenue remitted by consortium. A report in respect to this should be submitted to Parliament within three months from time the committee report is adopted by Parliament. The committee observes that government is intervention to tackle escalating pump prices by addressing challenges associated with the import routes alone have not been able to stabilize pump prices. Also, whereas the government of Uganda recognizes the national strategic fuel reserves as being vital to the stability and normalization of the detailing prices through through cautionizing the market from sudden place that is no funds have been allocated towards talking of the strategic fuel reserves at the GST. The committee recommends that the minister responsible for finance should allocate funds equivalent to 30 million dollars million liters of fuel in the budget for financial year 2023-24 to facilitate stocking of fuel reserves at the GST else government should remit its failure to stabilize fuel prices and withdraw its assurance as provided for under rule 
181 of the 2021 Rules of Procedure of Parliament. In conclusion, right honorable speaker, the government, government pledged to stabilize retail fuel prices through a number of interventions which have up to now failed to tackle the problem. Government also recognized that the national strategic fuel reserves contribute to stability and normalization of fuel detailing prices through cautionizing the market from sudden price escalations, but no funds have been allocated by Ministry of Finance and Economic Development. Stock the fuel reserves at GST. Instead, the National Strategic Fuel Reserves at GST are mainly used by UNOC and consortium to trade in fuel with OMCs across the country. In general, the government of Uganda has failed in its responsibility to maintain the national strategic reserves as required by Section 35 of the Petroleum Supply Act 2008, hence 2003, hence compromising, compromising the stability of country's petroleum supply. As a result, Uganda continue to endure high pump prices one year since government promised to arrest the problem. The committee duly established that government, government assured it to stabilize retail fuel prices has not been fulfilled. This as described in the table below. One, number, assurance, stabilize fuel prices, status of implementation was not uh, fulfilled, time lag, just one year. Right on speaker, I beg to submit. Thank you, Honorable Secretary. Thank you. Your maiden report, well done. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, uh, so, uh, on, on you, you, when you are presenting the report for the record, I just wanted it to be cleared. You referred this report under Rule 34, but it should be Rule 179. So for the record to be well captured. Because 34 is the field visit. Yes, and this was assurance under 179. So, uh, Honorable Minister, I wanted to make a clarification on a simple matter before we can open the debate so that we are well guided in our debate. So, Honorable Minister. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. First of all, I would wish to appreciate the report as presented by the committee. However, I want to point out a few things and clarify to inform the debate such that we talk at an informed viewpoint. Number one, Uganda operates a liberalized downstream petroleum market where pump prices are determined by the forces of demand and supply as guided by the Petroleum Supply Act of 2003. This by law and Petroleum Supply General Regulations of 2009, with amendments of 2012 and 2018. Being a net importer, Uganda petroleum product prices are subject to global market prices. And these are fundamental issues. As a country, we are receivers, we are not producers. We are not suppliers either, so we are actually price takers. Number two, Uganda is currently supplied with petroleum products through Malaba, Busia, Mutukula, and through Lake Victoria with products loaded uh, from Kisumu oil jetty in Kenya over Lake Victoria <coughs> using a barge that discharges the products into Mahathi Infra Terminal in Kaukunia Entebbe. Three, we continue to engage, we have continued over time to engage with the 
uh, Kenya and Tanzania through which we import our petroleum products. And that discussion, uh, which we actually undertake uh, monthly, has assured us the continuity of supply. This is very important. And we have had these incidences where the fuel supplies to Uganda are threatened and the ministry actually intervenes to ensure the stability. Of, so we should emphasize that we need to have fuel coming into Uganda. The country has also been well supplied in the various routes, the Kenyan route and then the Tanzanian route. Uh, I would wish to point out, we have established uh, an association of uh, the oil marketing companies in Uganda. They are not operating as individuals. They are now operating as an association. And the supply is influenced by the association and also the prices are actually checked through the association and we are partnering with them as a ministry. And I will give you examples how we are stabilizing the fuel prices. The highest price of petroleum products we actually uh, we witnessed it in July 2022, where the fuel prices went to as high as uh, for petrol 6,590 Uganda shillings, and diesel prices were as high as 6,313. And the ministry and government has actually been bringing this price down. And by December 2022, 20, uh, we actually managed to bring the prices of uh, petrol from that high 6,000 to 5,390, 5,379 shillings. This shows that we are actually impacting and checking on the prices and bringing them down. And the fuel and the, and the diesel was 5,582. And these prices continued coming down and the lowest we have ever registered since the, the spike of fuel prices was in July 2023, where the prices were as low as 4,970 shillings for petrol. From six, over 6,000 to 4,970. So it is erroneous for us actually to say government has failed in its obligations to check the fuel prices. I will also give you an example. In the recent past, I will tell you by 15th September, I will tell you how the fuel prices have actually moved across the region. In Tanzania, Dar es Salaam, I will tell you the prices of Mombasa and also Mandera and then Kampala and you'd be able to see what government is doing on this. Uh, the prices I'm going to quote are actually in Uganda shillings, converted. But I can also tell you the prices in the various, uh, in the various countries, various points. Uh, September 15th, the fuel prices, uh, for example, a Petrol in Dar es Salaam was an equivalent of 4,889 shillings. But if you look at what it was in Mombasa, it was an equivalent of 5,305. And as you come towards the border of Uganda, you would actually realize the prices were going higher. Nairobi, the price was 5,060,000, ,000, equivalent of Uganda shillings. Uh, when you get, get to Eldoret, 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 the price was 5,391. But when you come to Kampala, the price was 5,000. The trucks from Kenya... Conclude, actually, Honor, Minister. The, price of, the, price, the trucks from Kenya actually come with empty tanks and a fuel from Uganda to make the, the return trip. So it means 
we are checking on the prices. Honorable, uh, right honorable speaker, I think to me the report is erroneous. It is not that government has failed to check the prices. Government is doing everything possible to ensure constant supply of fuel. Number two, we are checking on the prices of fuel and we are competitive in the region. Right, Honorable Speaker, I submit. Yeah, thank you. Now, uh, Honourable Minister, the tricky part <laughs> of it is how you start and then how you conclude. Okay, you first showed that uh, these are global issues, you're not in control. Then after you are showing you're the one who has brought the prices down. <laughs> so so uh, I think in between, uh, that's what causes confusion. But um, thank you. This is a very, very a good update. Now, honorable colleagues, uh, such a report, it is for information purposes. It is for not because... You cannot make a resolution that now Parliament resolved that the government has failed to stabilize <laughs> fuel prices. <laughs> then which action would you take uh, on such a report? Okay? So let us uh, debate with the view of not blaming, but of making proposals on top of what government has done. What do we think it can do? That's a debate that adds value, not a debate of blaming. Okay, so I will start with the uh, Honorable Nowherein. Uh, I add on Honorable Yanima. I add on uh, Busia. I add on Honorable Kazini. I add on uh, Dr. Yonga. Honorable Tom, you're a member of the committee. Yes, uh, I will allow information because we've been here for long. Uh, Sarah, then Milton, uh, uh, Honorable Katabazi, uh, uh, Dr. Pio. Uh, I, I first picked those ones who have not spoken. Uh, oh, and the Honorable Rauben. Those who have not spoken and have been here <laughs> uh, for, for long. I picked you, Honorable. I noted. So Thank you, you very you, much. You are among the ones I've picked. We first do a round, then I can go. I pick colleagues who have been speaking. But Honorable Bright, I will allow you. You've been here since 2 p.m. Thank you, Right Honorable mm -hmm. Speaker, for the opportunity. I want to thank the Committee on Government Assurance uh, two for the report. Ish. Two minutes. Uh, right, Honorable Speaker, the issue of raising fuel prices is a legitimate concern and it affects all the citizens of this country. Right, Honorable Speaker, when fuel prices rise, they trigger of rising of prices of most essential commodities because of increased transport costs. And uh, in this, it is the farmers who suffer most. And this is the category, most of the, uh, of the people we represent in this house. Right Honorable Speaker, we have experienced increases in prices of uh, soap, sugar, and other essential commodities because of increased transport costs. And unfortunately, when this happens, the farmers, the, the prices of uh, farm produce remain relatively stable and this means the farmer will be denied the limited household income that they can use for other things than they are spending so much on essential commodities so i want to ask government is it not possible to make deliberate efforts to expand the fuel reserves so that when we have such shortages then the government comes in to step up to, 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 to improve on the supply of fuel so that the prices do not go ex escalate. I thank you. Thank you. Colleagues, I mentioned you. We'll do each other quickly. Honorable Yanima. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Mine, I think I would want the minister to address himself to the current taxes on fuel all over the region. Our taxes are lower. Kenya was almost striking 
because the taxes are high. Our rates, our fuel prices are still high looking at the taxes. And for us, we are saying, when you look at the prices of all over Kampala, even the whole country, you find Shell and Total have, the prices are high. They claim that they have better fuel. And we're supposed to have good fuel in Uganda. Are we supposed to have regular and whatever? We are supposed to have good fuel. At the same time, I know Shell and Total have overhead costs because they have big offices, they have MDs, retail managers. Why do some of these people bring fuel? But the most important thing is the tax that we have on fuel. And I think it is for government. If the tax that we have on, on our fuel was being put to good use, like this parliament, intense parliament, you put 100 shillings on fuel, but the money should go to what? Maintenance of the roads. You would deny the roads the money. So we are not benefiting out of that increase of, of prices because people are managing, but now they are coming to a stage where they cannot be able to manage. And some of us who have been in the army, they normally say, failing to take a decision at a decisive moment is criminal. Very soon we shall be criminals because we can't serve the people we have. People cannot manage. People are desperate all over because of this fuel business. People cannot run business. For us in transport, really, we can't break even. So what will happen in the future? So I wouldn't want for a government to say, uh, because of this and that, you are we are supposed to take care of the people's interests and ensure people live within their means. Thank you. What's here? Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Mine is on supply and demand. I think why the prices are escalating, uh, there's a, low, a high demand compared to supply. Uh, second, I'm going to talk about competition. While we are having these prices increasing, me, I come from the border. Sometimes I sleep in Kenya. In the morning, I'm in Uganda. So I know the prices in Kenya and Uganda. So I think the problem is also competition since these are private owned fuel stations. Just the way my brother said, also we have a, prob a problem of consumer per perceptions. Some people prefer other fuels like uh, Total and Shell. I myself, if I don't fill my car from Total, I either do Total or Shell. So we, we, you find at a time that they're so high, but I prefer, we prefer that they have better fuel compared to other fuel stations. Uh, then finally, I would urge you that we should have uh, laws and regul regulations governing the fuel prices in Uganda. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Kazin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity. Thank you, Honorable Secretary Lego, for the statement. And thank you, Honorable Minister, for the updates. I think fuel prices is affecting every Ugandan, including with the leaders. And some of us have even failed to access our constituencies because of the longer distance that requires enough fuel. However, as an advice, Mr. Speaker, I want to say that the government at least reduced fuel uh, taxes on fuel operators, such as that they can also reduce on the price. Then secondly, in Uganda, and actually it is only in Uganda, every fuel station is selling at a different price. They are district with the limited fuel stations. They take advantage of no competition and they sell at the, a price they determine. The, minister, the ministry and the government should come and put uniform prices for fuel countrywide with that, I think we can do something. I thank you. Uh, uh, Enoch, let's come right, please don't mind. Uh, uh, colleagues who had not spoken, I want to give them a chance. Honorable, here we use a microphone. <laughs> Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, and I want to appreciate the report. Uh, mine is a, a question. Much as we appreciate that some of these uh, factors that are raising fuel prices in Uganda, 
could be foreign or uh, global factors. But in this particular case, I want also to understand if it was a global one, they would get us statistics from other countries. But if it is not, then also other factors for either refining and profits, distribution, marketing, or taxes. I would like the minister to uh, actually attribute it, the increase on the listed factors so that we can also uh, get the knowledge about this uh, hike in the fuel prices. Thank you so much. Th thank you. Yes. The, uh, amigo no, uh, okay, Max, you've already come up. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Right Honourable Speaker, for this opportunity. And I want to thank the committee for the report presented and the minister for the statement in response. Mr. Speaker, my point is on the impact of fuel price on inflation. You said, Mr. Speaker, that this report is for information. And uh, when I look at it, I do not see the extent to which it is informative. How I wish this report dwelled into economic analysis of inflation, because we all know that low and stable inflation is good for growth and therefore income and poverty reduction, and high and escalating uh, prices, that is inflation, is bad for growth. Could the minister therefore give us additional information to show us that what he says that our fuel prices are stable so that we are able to know whether we have any economic gain after these managed fuel prices. I thank you. Thank you. In fact, I saw the PSSD giving the uh, economic outlook and the latest inflation figures showing Uganda has been the best in the region, that we are, uh, we are the best. So now what, wha what we are left with is translating that into uh, uh, um, maybe I would say direct impact on the people because if inflation in Kenya for example is at around 9% but their lending rates at 12% and the inflation in Uganda is at 3% our lending rates are 20% okay <laughs> uh, you find a huge mismatch I think these are the issues we shall need uh, to, to be looking into. Honorable uh, Timuzigu, oh, who is ready? But all of you colleagues, I'm going to give thank you, you no need to. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I take this opportunity to thank uh, the, the chair who, who presented the report and the minister who indicated that Uganda is doing well. However, uh, Mr. Speaker, I would like to mention that fuel is a strategic resource. With a lower prices of fuel, business people make, pro make profit. And that profit inspires them to remain in business and even start more business. So I would like to say on that matter that, uh, Honorable Minister, we need to do more than that so that we can have better envirom a better environment for business, knowing that we have, we, our country is landlocked. So we need to know that. And lastly, right honorable speaker, I see this recommendation on page 15, that we sh government should uh, give money three, 30 million uh, for 30 million liters. It is a good recommendation, but I would like to add that government should consider fewer to be a strategic resource for Uganda. Because we, have, we are a landlocked country and we use a lot of fuel to transport our commodities from Mombasa to come to Uganda, then again in the whole country. So I want to submit, Mr. Thank you. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Rauben, then uh, Dr. Isma. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I would also want to thank the chair of the committee for your report also for the statement from the minister. Mine is on quality. Because I, I always think 
all our petroleum products, we get them from one source. But when you go to different stations, you find them having varying prices. So I wonder whether, whether the quality is different or the quality is the same. The second one, I wanted to, the minister, uh, it goes to the minister, I want to know, we have our reserves in Jinja. Is it Jinja storage terminal? Why don't we stock them so that when the prices of fuel is high, even the what, so that we can bring ours, stabilize, stabilize our own prices. Uh, lastly, I want to talk on uh, also electricity and the solar. P very few people, when you compare their population, they use them for the household. There is kerosene. So whatever we are talking, I'm not seeing mentioning kerosene. Even the reserves, you are saying, you are recommending that they have 20 liters of diesel and 10 liter and, and the 20, 20 million liters of diesel and 10 million of, of petrol. But I don't see us considering kerosene, which is being used by the poor of our people and the bulk, which is in our population. Thanks very much. Thank you. Honorable Robin, I, ca I can volunteer information. The fuel is not the same, the quality. I have ever gone on one of the good petrol stations. I took fuel, my car could not ignite right away. We all know. So why should but, we, but why hey, should we oh, have oh, our hours in our no, no, well, That's not how they behave in parliament. <laughs> okay? Now, the question to the minister is, how is this happening? Okay? Uh, how come... You, you know, you find some companies are very clear. Uh, it either share or total. Beyond that, okay? I was with one minister. He took fear and uh, the moment he just did like this, also the engine warned him on the, on the fuel. But, on our minister, there are companies making fuel out of burning tires. Yes, they burn tires, they make fuel, and they supply to company. One of them is my neighbor. One of them is my neighbor at uh, one of my facilities in Matuga. It took the intervention of NEMA. You know, uh, people around had even petitioned me because people could wake up and their noses, they were bringing uh, out uh, uh, black stuff in the morning. But, you know, you come, you, you complain, even, you know, no one wants to touch them. You hear someone big, ah, it belongs to so-and-so in the government. But I complained. I run a factory nearby. In fact, all products by morning, they are black. You complain, you say people are, are, are breathing fuel. You know, but just here, Matugo Nunkoma Cross. So it took Nema, now I became tough, I put in my own. That's when Nema came in and closed them, uh, some Chinese company. But they burn these tires, these tires which you see, all tires. So they burn these tires, they make fuel out of it, then they go and they brand it in petrol stations. That's why, so if he has, if he has around um, 60 liters of green fuel and he brands with 40, from that fuel, and he has a government license, he's even an investor, he has an investor's license, and, he, and you complain to government officials, no one is doing anything, and that's why we are having bad fuel. On our minister, is going on. I'm told there is another one in Ijinja, and, and, and they are going on. So I wanted to volunteer that information. On our minister, I can volunteer to drive you, and I show you the place. Because even Nema knows. It's not, this is not just talking about what you've had on the street. Uh, I'll come on, I walk around, I don't mind. So I had picked on a, a doctor. Now, colleagues, I'm first speaking, colleagues who have been here with us and have not spoken. Then after I'm going to do a round of your, there is a lot of jam outside. So I'm going to give you enough. Yeah, we can be here. Yeah, I'm doing government business. Yes. Thank you. Very <coughs> I, uh, uh, we have refreshments in the canteen in case you <laughs> uh, Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker and colleagues, I would like to thank the Honorable Minister for the report and more so to thank him 
for outlining the factors that have caused the increase in price of fuel. However, it's important to note that uh, this particular issue we are discussing is critical because as far as survival of our economy and its st stability, if fuel issue is not handled properly, we are going to be in a crisis. Right Honorable Speaker, I'm aware in my area, as far as service delivery, more so access to service delivery, it's now a big problem. I would like to appreciate MPs who have so far, out of their own good hearts, who have given the ambulances and so forth. But even when we have given those ambulances and they are helping our communities, accessing health services is a big challenge because even before they put fuel in the vehicles, people don't have the money. And then also movement of goods, it has become very expensive. So all these issues actually impact on our lives. Thank you. Now, Dr. Yonga. Thank you very much, Right Honourable Speaker. Also, I would like to appreciate the, gov uh, the Committee on Government Assurance and the Minister for trying to explain what's happening about the fuel prices in this country. And uh, we, ha we are in this parliament, we are complaining about uh, the raising of school fees in private and, of course, in public schools. But uh, we didn't try to analyze what could be the causes. Now it's coming up here that uh, the prices are still very high, so there's no way the private schools can be able to reduce the school fees. But also I'm asking myself, we have the fuel reserves, but there's no stock. But I think we have to plan. Because if we don't do that, we shall continue having this problem. That those fuel reserves which you have, I understand, and ginger, we should always stock them with fuel. And I think those people are dealing with fuel, I think they are doing a very good business. Because whenever I go to Hoima, on almost every year, they are constructing a new petrol station. In other words, we have the fuel in plenty. But what you are failing to do is controlling the prices. I beg to submit. Thank you. Uh, no, I'm just coming right this one. I don't mind. Yes. Yes, Honorable Tom Bright. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Much as we talk about the prices, there is also an element of holding. Many businessmen, they hold the fuel in order to raise their fortune. To me, I think the government needs to, the ministry needs to raise more effort to start inspecting and checking out those who are holding fuel. For example, you can go to Ginger and you find there is fuel, and they tell you that fuel is not for the government, it's for a businessman. What does it mean? There is somebody who's making abnormal profits behind our expenses. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Andrew. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I just rose up on a point of concern. Because for all the different sectors where government has a keen interest, we have intervened. Whether it is a private or public, we have intervened as a government. Now, the issue of fuel, we cannot have an, an arm's distance and say, no, this one is a private player. We need to step in as government. I want to just, in a very respectful way, call our minister to order that we cannot distance ourselves from intervening as a government. We cannot wait for the prices to come down from up. If it means cutting down the taxes, let's do it. Let's do something so that it has a ripple effect on the whole economy. Thank you very much. Th thank you. Uh, Honorable Ndamira, and then Haji Rueda, and then Honorable Saru Pende. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I also want to appreciate the report by the minister on fuel. But I also want uh, the minister to interest himself on the disparity of fuel prices. I don't know whether some providers 
Uh, I don't know how quality is being handled in Uganda. I wanted to know, because the moment you go for the cheapest price, then you face the challenges. Here I want to, the minister to interest himself. Why is it in Uganda where you find that uh, the prices are not the same? You go, Shell has its own. You go, Total, and then there are some other uh, petrol stations which you cannot mention here. I want to know, do we have a regulatory body that is, is there regulating the prices of our country? To me, I think that we are being suffocated. And especially Masaka, Tumbarara, I think these people are targeting Western. I don't know why. <laughs> because the moment you go that area, you begin by counting petrol station, petrol station, they are like shops now. I want to know, do you have a regulatory body to regulate these, these uh, business people on prices and on quality of what we are supposed to be taking in as a country? Thank you. Yes, Thank you remember. very much. Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I also want to add my voice on the issue of quality of petroleum products. But specifically, I want to underscore the issue of adulteration of petroleum products. Right Honorable Speaker, you find that when kerosene is low in prices, for example, you even find trucks by the roadside, like if you come to Mubende, where people are siphoning good fuel, and if kerosene is low in price, they are adding on. They are also these, they, they are adding on kerosene on top of petrol, or they, they add diesel in petrol. And you know what that means for people who know some elementary mechanics? They know what paraffin does to, to rubber. Paraffin will go into your ignition system and burns all the rubber seals and everything. And you can lose your vehicle. So is the minister also interested in that area where pe petroleum farms and dealers adulterate products? Thank you very much. Thank you. That's Honorable Pendi. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I want to appreciate the committee. And to note that this, was, um, this report arose from the government assurances, statements made by minister on the floor, assuring us of the commitment in handling the challenge. But right honorable speaker, I note from the report in the minister that in response, the minister's statement does not give us what efforts government has done in dealing with the challenge but rather i am looking at the statement which was signed for the minister the honorable nankawira which is uploaded what the minister focused on was telling us about the stable supply yes the supply has been stable but you are not giving us the means of what government is doing in resolving the the issue of the price, the increase in price. I note, right honorable speaker, that the minister attempted to indicate that the pump price or the prices per ton at the international level increased from 4% for petrol to 8% per ton. That is the only statement. That is at the international level. However, right honorable speaker, what I want to state is that the issue of the fuel reserve cannot be underlooked. It is something that we must focus on and have in place Uganda being a landlocked country. Our forefathers who planned for that knew that Uganda is landlocked and we cannot afford to do away with it. Second, lastly, right honorable speaker, I want to agree with the committee because if cabinet made a decision to give 30 million dollars to UNOC to have a reserve, then government 
No, no, but we have timelines we've set for everyone. Yeah. Yes, Honorable Kabanda, then Honorable Kahonda, then Dr. Bokenya. Then. Thank you so oh, much, Right Honorable Colleagues, speaker. why the panic? Ah. You, you're the people who want to speak and run away. Right Honorable. Hey. Right Honorable Speaker, mine was on the issue of uh, the reserves, and it was mentioned by Honorable Rao Ben. Mm -hmm. So I will, I, I'm covered. Okay. Thank you. Honorable Kahonda. Thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I want to thank the committee. However, Right Honorable Speaker and colleagues, I find the minister's statement wanting. Other than other than, uh, other than uh, the, the reasons he has given of the general increase internationally, he has not given us other factors that are associated to the increase of fuel locally here in Uganda. Uh, Honorable Minister, I expected you to clarify on that. Uh, Honorable Bright has talked of holding. We have had this experience even in other commodities. And at the end of the day, the, the, the prices are increased day by day because the government, you tend not to have control over this. Right, Honorable Speaker, there is a need. If there is a lacuna in the law, we need to sure this. We have got the Petroleum Authority. I don't know its work in this. We have got this Petroleum Supply Act of 2003. Probably we need to revisit this law and sure this. Lastly, right, Honorable Speaker, you referred to one of the Chinese companies that uh, burn tires. But there is also another Chinese company at Maya on Masaka Road that, buy, that buys used, fuel, used oil. And uh, uh, as a result, they get fuel, especially diesel, and then they supply to these fueling stations. And as a result, the, fuel, uh, the, the vehicles, especially those who have powerful cars, they cannot ignite. Right, Honorable Speaker? We need to show this. And the minister should actually guide this country in addressing these concerns. Thank you. Now, Honorable Kawanda, the, 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 the Petroleum Authority, which we passed, this road is for monitoring and regulating the exploration. Okay? It's to do with the new oil sector, not to do with prices. The minister has an arrangement under his ministry, maybe he can, uh, he, can, he can elaborate better on how they control this. But uh, the issue of reserves is, is, is a very, very serious issue. Because you can have stable supply, but we've ever been beaten. You remember? Once beaten, twice shy. So the issue of reserves, I want to minister, we need uh, to have a very serious attention on it. Dr. Bukenya? Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, for giving me the opportunity. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, I want to thank the Honorable Secretary for the report. But I also inform you on the issue we've just talked about. In my other life, I'm a pastor. When did you become one? Uh, you just didn't know. And uh, apparently, in the Bible, in Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 up to 13, they talk about the ten virgins who are waiting for a wedding, they are waiting for a groom, and the five were prepared, and the other five were not. So the five missed the wedding when they had gone to look for fuel, by the way, surprisingly. And now, this is a very Christian government, the NRM government. But it doesn't learn from the Bible. And the minister intentionally decided to dodge talk, talking about the strategic reserves, not referring to the other ten virgins in the Bible in this Christian government. So I want to ask the minister through you to come and talk about the strategic reserves uh, as we finish our debate. Second, right uh, Member Speaker, I have relatives also in Rwanda. I know it's a small country, so I visited recently and I saw the fuel prices are the same from border to border. 
but here in Uganda, in Kampala alone, every station has its, even if it's the same company, by the way, uh, if a company is called Bianima, because I don't want to mention the other names, if it is called Bianima, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, now, co colleagues, you've seen uh, when you're a pastor and at the same time a gynecologist, <laughs> the, then you discover verses of virgins <laughs> in the Bible. So, uh, one of Milton Muuma, one of uh, uh, Namutumba, Mariam, then, uh, but uh, Shadow Minister, why do you panic so much? Is Parliament going away? I cannot cross such a topic without a shadow minister contributing. Yeah, and you should come at the end. You don't come in. Eh? Yeah, you come as part of the port conclude. Yeah. So Muuma, Mariam, then uh, Dr. Opio, then Obiga Rose. Thank you very much. Right on speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to first agree with one of the recommendations made by the committee that is to do with the additional funding. But the issue of uh, us having a forensic audit, I feel this is not going to help in any way. And I want to request the House, at least when we are adopting, that one will not help what we are trying to solve. Mr. Speaker, when I heard the Minister attentively, moreover, saying, yes, we are operating a liberalized economy, it is true. But we shall not liberalize. We shall not liberalize Ugandans. Fuel, fuel, fuel is a basic necessity and commodity that we need. So when you say, you see we can't do much as government, then somewhere you say government has done a lot in this and that, Honor Minister, you are hitting yourself in one way or another. But help the Ugandans. Help us by addressing the issue of monitoring what is happening in the fuel sector. You are doing a lot in energy, but the issue of petrol, diesel, you've totally left Ugandans in the hands of crooks or sharks. Because this morning I was moving from Mukono, but I passed over 12 different polling se uh, petrol stations. Petrol stations. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the prices at these petrol stations were so differing from one petrol station to another, implying the ministry has totally left Ugandans unto whom it may concern as far as fuel prices are concerned. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Naigaga. Now, on, uh, just, uh, just a small thing. On the issue of foreign codes, colleagues, I had warned earlier on. Because I had a meeting with the Auditor General. A forensic audit costs more than one billion for each forensic audit we order. And what is so <laughs> uh, what is so funny, the Auditor General doesn't have that budget. So he goes to that same agency, OMDA, to raise the money to be investigated. And then they say, I don't have it in the budget. So we have many forensic audits we ordered and they are lying idle. So for, for it to be a forensic audit, uh, we should have first done an extremely thorough job. And we find, no, these issues are beyond our reach, but not a forensic audit, or no, uh, the way we are doing it on very, very many issues. We should only make decisions here and resolutions which are implementable, not those to go and lie idle. And then, of course, during appropriation, we shall need to be appropriating to the Auditor General money for forensic audits in case we have some, because we can't avoid them. But on such a matter, really, no way. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I'm a member of the committee, and I wanted to give information like you guided. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, on the 5th of September this year, the same minister, my brother, Honorable Kasai, did present a report on fuel crisis in this country, which we debated, and the issue of fuel reserve was the main action point. And the right honorable speaker did guide that you come up with an action plan on how to put regional 
fuel reserves in this country. Right Honourable Speaker, as we moved around as a committee, even the ginger fuel reserve that we have as a country is being rented out. The fuel and ginger fuel reserve is owned by private people. The government is not in charge, like the Prime Minister has always assured Ugandanis that they are in charge. So, right when I was speaker, that's the information I wanted to have, to give, that even the fuel reserve that we have in Ginger is being rented out to the private operators. I beg to submit. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable. Yes, Dr. Pia. Thank you, right Honorable Speaker, and I thank the committee for the report. Our fuel reserves were constructed in the 70s with a capacity of 30 million liters when the daily consumption of fuel was very, very low. Today, as we speak, our daily consumption is 6.5 million liters of fuel per day, meaning the reserves can only last five days. That is just about a week. In other words, what we have as fuel reserves is too small to even stabilize prices. It may address shortages for a short time, but it cannot address the price stabilization. The U.S. last year released reserves for a period of six months and were able to stabilize prices of fuel and reduce it by a thousand shillings. So we need to expand it. But lastly, we need to come up with innovations. Honorable Minister, last time you came up with innovations of energy saving bulbs with a high price of electricity, energy saving stoves. Why don't we think of energy saving vehicles in the form of electric vehicles? Come up with innovations. It has been shown that it is 70% cheaper to fuel an electric vehicle than a petrol or diesel run vehicle. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank yes, you so Honourable much, Speaker. Right Honourable Speaker. Right Honourable Speaker, I'll I want to join the rest in thanking the committee. Right Honourable Speaker, for some of us who drive very far, these fluctuating fuel prices have become a nightmare. Indeed, my car has got engine knock twice from the very funny petrol stations we have in this country. Because when you have taken off, you can only put 100 liters, and 100 liters cannot take me up to Terego. Now, you want to fuel on the way. You find you have got the wrong fuel. What is happening to this country? Do we have the right people who take measures to see to it that Ugandans have value for money? Yet, right on our speaker, the prices of fuel on the way keeps increasing. By the time you arrive at Rua, you have a totally different price. And we would think if we have the, uh, the train going to uh, up to maybe Terego, if, even if it stopped in Pakwach, we would be grateful. What is happening to this? We don't have cable cars. We go out of this country, we learn nothing, we come with nothing. And we still want to say we are capable of running this country. I think drastic steps must be taken by this parliament Thank to you. see that we have a real value for money. Thank you. Honorable Minister, you've been talking electric, electric, quite electric. How are we prepared with charging stations for electric vehicles from what Honorable Dr. Pio had said? Uh, Honorable Guzoli. Chair, thank, I mean, Mr. Speaker, thank you so much. The issue of fuel prices, I'm sure, is there to everybody in this house and to the people of Uganda. Mr. Speaker, I wanted the minister to tell us Uganda's energy transition plan. Y you brief us on how you want us to transition from fossils to clean energy where we will not have these problems. Two, I want you to tell this country how you are working with the Ministry of Finance to strengthen the Ugandan ceilings so that it's stronger against the dollar and can be able to fix some of these things. Three, during Chogam we invested through UDC in Chogam and were able to provide facilities. Tell us how you are working with the UDC to ensure investment in such strategic areas like the fuel reserves. And tell us how you are taking advantage of public-private partnership to address this problem. For I need you to brief this count on how you intend to take advantage of what other people are doing in instituting stabilization funds, such that when prices are high, 
that fan can cushion. When prices go too low below, something is added and, and there is always research to fix those problems. Five <laughs> minister, honorable minister, I come from West Nile. My constituents borders DRC. Their fuel is 3,300. You think you are raising money through taxes on fuel, but now Ugandans are going to get fuel from, they are smuggling from DRC to Uganda, and you are losing all the tax. Thank you. Now, Honorable colleagues, these are, these are really good questions. Okay? But these are questions that cannot fit in a debate. Because when you ask like a transition policy, colleagues, when you have questions of this nature, these are questions I want to give space on the order paper. Eh? Rule 42 of our rules of procedure question is to ministers. The minister comes here in detail because these are questions where he needs to go and consult. He's taken copy people, they work out very good answers. And colleagues, if you could take advantage, I would be giving you space on the order paper because they sound very, very brilliant and that's what we should be doing yes uh, then thank you very much right honorable speaker and then chemonges i would like to thank the committee for the report and the response from the minister however uh the minister said that they've done a lot to stabilize the prices in the first instance how did the prices go up i remember there was a store of trucks at the border when fuel was about 3200 and then it shot to 6000 because they said trucks because of covid restrictions when it went to 6000 it has never come down to 3200 again so that means something funny happened and I suspect the monopolistic tendencies or the monopolistic competition that these companies enjoy have turned out to be cartels that they sit down and say let us fix the price at this level and this has been also transfused into other economies around East Africa. I'm a member of the Defense and the Internal Affairs, and I had a chance of visiting Somalia with the committee. But the pump price is 1,400 equivalents of Uganda, pump price. These guys get fuel from Yemen. So I'm wondering, can government think of talking to Somalia. Maybe that's the reason why we have so many Somali fuel companies here. There is a reason. There is a very big catch. Because if... Okay, thank you. Um, yes, Honorable Mushemeza. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Recently, Parliament adopted a commission on competition, but the executive rejected it. Of course, this commission would have also worked for consumer protection. But we missed that opportunity. We settled, after the executive insisted, we settled for a technical committee and a minister of trade. Now, my advice is that in the short run, we prompt the president to assent that law so that we can have that technical committee effective and empower it. In the medium term, we also bring in the bill on consumer protection. Then this technical committee, which will serve for both the competition law and the consumer protection, would be empowered now to crack down on these malpractices we have been pointing out. That would help us dealing with, with these malpractices. Then, secondly, I also advise we do a comparative study uh, the Honorable Minister pointed it very briefly. Because sometimes we find it is not true. We just hear Rwanda is cheaper. Let's have a comparison.
comparative study, a detailed, and we dismiss this notion or we embrace the notion that prices are different elsewhere. We cannot avoid issues of demand and supply. And that's why I commend the issue of the reserves. Because if the national oil company is controlling the reserves and the issue is supply, then we would release our reserves and deal with the matter of supply so that the demand can be balanced with supply. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Shemiz. And I'm glad uh, the government never took a risky step of subsidies. Counties which went for subsidies? economy they've tried to cancel the subsidies and then